Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Barely There Theater, where we present theater to you, barely. Up this week, something that's not a play or a rehearsal. There will be a brief message at the end of the episode, so stick around. Um, so yes, um, so, uh, as I was trying to figure out how I wanted to record this, yeah. I realized I didn't have, um, three of the same kinds of microphone, um, just because I'm, it drives me crazy if I'm, like, working on something and, like, someone's recorded on a different microphone from everyone else, because yeah. they just sound different, mm-hmm. um, and so I was trying to figure out, I was like, I could borrow mics from Micah. Um, but then I realized City will also jump in at some point and join our discussion because she's also listened to both episodes. And, oh, cool. Awesome. And why not? And so I was like, yeah. you know what? We're going to try just using this really nice microphone, cranking it up really high so it picks up every sound in the zip code. And, uh, <laughs> awesome. so that way we don't have to like tether ourselves to a, to a microphone. We can just relax, uh, lean back and discuss. Nice. I truly enjoyed listening to these the, the oh, listening experience was really what so I'm, you, you had described it to me and they played it for me like the virginia wolf recording like, yeah yeah, yeah like this is what they used to do back in the day they got audio plays mm-hmm. more so than they do now and i can, I can show that to you later okay. later tonight cassie it's really cool the second that like you went out i was like i know exactly what he was telling me now like <laughs> captured it perfectly it was like so unbelievable i was like it felt like I was listening to a recorded. It was, yeah. I mean, like oh, completely. It like a live performance. It was so. My mother so thought it was cool. a live performance. Oh my god! Thank She's, you. And That's I, and so. I was like, no, this, this was that day that I. And, oh okay. And it's like wow. It, I didn't, and t- when I when I pitched, I just I say pitched like it was, it's not my decision. I when I told <laughs> you guys <laughs> um, that I wanted, because when I was envisioning the show, I was like, it's a show that was written for someone doing a one-person show on stage. Right. Um, it doesn't really make sense to just have that be, like, a strictly radio play, like someone speaking into the microphone. Mm-hmm. To me, that felt, um, odd. Yeah. <laughs> I probably could have done it that way, but it just felt odd. It made more sense to structure it, since it's a show about someone being in a show, to have it be, like, a show and perform to an audience. And so, I was like... That'll be easy enough to do. Mm -hmm. That'll be fine. Um, Because what I did... um, At first, I was... um, So what I did is I took a recording of the original Ghost Light when it was performed on stage by a person. What I did is I went through and I cut out every single laugh from that performance. And I had, like, a shit ton of laughs because um, the actor who played it last time, he... He really he got a lot of laughs that night. He he really connected with the audience. Oh, awesome! Um, but he he connected with the audience in the way we're like. I was wondering why they sounded so. I was like, that's the exact type of laugh that you would get after that joke. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is it, and it's because that's why. It the laughs were annoying. quite frankly the hardest part of the editing process because um, I cut. So what I did is I have like the whole track and then I cut out every laugh. Lo- like, every laugh, so it's just, like, 30 little bits all, all across the timeline. Mm-hmm. And it's roughly the same length as what you guys perform. So it was, like, lined up, like, more or less with, like, where the jokes landed in your guys' performance. Mm-hmm. But what I found as I was going through is that the types of laughter were not proportionate to the how funny you guys were being in that moment. Like, there would be some jokes that he would really land yeah. um, and would get, like, a big laugh, but the way you guys did it, it wouldn't even really, like read as comedic almost <laughs> yeah um just because of the different ways different performers perform it and so like if i like did a one for one and be like this joke got this laugh and just like pasted it over your performance it felt wrong because it was like you would have like a little dry quip and then it was like ah just like a big audience laugh right. and he also got a lot of um humor out of shifting character with physicality so like there were laughs that were in response to no sound so, like, there wasn't a joke. That wasn't, like, a line that prompted it. Mm-hmm. It was just, like, him, like, shifting his posture, and so the audience would laugh at that. So it was, like, there were some laughs that weren't even <laughs> tied to a line. And so, funny. like, I had more laughs than I had lines. And so what I had to do is, for both of your performances, find the most appropriate laugh for each thing that I personally thought was funny. I was like, that I feel like an audience would laugh at that. Yeah. So I, like, 
had to like go through and find like the laughs. I was like, okay, this laughs a little too much. This laughs a little too little. <laughs> I feel like a crowd might laugh this way. And so I would have to like literally just like drag and drop different laughs onto your guys' like joke lines or punch lines to be like, which one of these laughs <laughs>, oh laughs matches God. the joke? You, so you had to like listen to it and like feel it through for. Yeah. How long did it take you to edit these? Oh my God. So, well, there oh is. I, I guess <laughs> in comparison to like how long it usually takes you. It. So. Considerably, considerably longer. Part of it being I just hit, like, a mental health brick wall. Like, yeah. uh, so I, like, there was just, like, days on end where I, like, just, for whatever reason, could not bring myself to work on it. Yeah. Um, but eventually I was, like, it was, like, af- I think it was, like, after the episodes were that supposed was, to like, come out. the shortest mental health <laughs> I mean, Good for but, you for, yeah. like, only that last. I mean, mine all be, like, in a hole for months and I won't Same. touch it. You were so consistent and I, awesome. I, so what whatever it was was... Heard. It, I let it, like, go so long that, like, when the episode was supposed to go up the first of the month, um, or not the first, the first Wednesday of the month, yeah. um, I missed that date entirely, and that was when I was like, okay, I just need, I just need to get it done, or they'll never get done, so I had to, like, sit myself down and, like, I found ways to broke it up by, like, taking breaks, and, like, eventually I got through it, um, so if we ignore the part of the process where I was just procrastinating, right. um, <laughs> Oh, understandably. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, yeah. I mean, procrastinating might, might not be the right word, but um, really putting understand. putting it off into the future. Yeah. Um, the it probably took about three to four hours for each of your guys's performances, because yeah. it was just oh just listening to it over and over and like finding the right laughs um the getting the echo right to make it sound like you were in like a big room performing to a crowd that probably took it that probably alone took like two hours to get it sound right it because it was like if i tweaked it just a little bit it would make the room sound like way bigger and i was it's just like it would get distracting and so like tuning it to it was the point where it was just like bearable for an entire show Um, That was so cool because it felt like when I was listening back to it, um, so there's this uh, comedy club in Chicago called Zanies, and when I was listening to this, um, the the both both yours and mine, Mm -hmm. it I pictured like us standing on that stage of like almost like a stand like you know Mm -hmm. a, a, a comic is in the stand-up comedy mm-hmm. club. Yeah. That's exactly how I pictured. Yeah. I'm sure I'm like... Yes. I felt so removed. I, not so... Re- I felt like a healthy dose of removal from myself when I listened to it because I'm like, oh, wait, like, I'm in this world that's created that I know I wasn't actually in, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I can... But I could suspend it enough to believe that I was there. Mm-hmm. And I was able to, like, actually, for both of us, like, listen as an audience member. Cool. But, you know... Like, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I was going for. Um, it, it's crazy to me how much of the process was, was just totally deteriorating the audio quality because this mic is very, very nice. And like your voices oh, both come yeah, through like <laughs> crystal clean. And so what I had to do is like, A, I had to add an echo to it. B, I has to also had to add background noise because the original performance was recorded on like, just like a, a camcorder. Mm-hmm. So like the mic was not great. So you hear like the laughter, the actor, the like the oh, so of to... the air conditioning, oh, and so like yeah. it, if you, I kept the track as it originally was, yeah. it was like you guys talking and then like, <laughs> and like there was no way around it. So I had to make your tracks also go like just very quietly, so that way yeah. it like blended all better. And oh. so like so much of the process was making you guys sound worse than you actually sounded to oh, make it God. sound more like a live performance. It, it was. So- so well done. I mean, the editing was literally superb. Like that alone, just like right, like, <laughs> that, like just like the like the skeleton, the structure of the piece as a whole, even as a concept, is so like well supported. And you could tell there was like uh, we could tell obviously there was so much work put into it. But like I said, for someone like my mother, for example, who listened, literally thought she was listening to a play. Oh my god, like, that's so play. good. That's perfect. That's a little... Uh, I love hearing that, because that's exactly what I wanted the experience to feel like. Um, it, it, and it's that echo, too, mm-hmm. when you come out. It's like, yeah, the reverb. It's so good. It felt really real, and I felt pulled into the world, and you would, we just touched on it a little bit before, and you said, like, um, thinking about why do this play, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it wouldn't make 
sense to not add that audio quality yeah. because then it, would, it would sound like a podcast. You know? Yeah, like just, it would sound just like a dramatic podcast. Yeah, I'm like well, it, it didn't feel right. <laughs> it really helps, I think, the listener to understand the jokes better, also because you know comedy is kind of you know subjective, yeah. mm-hmm. and and not everybody, but. But it kind of helps when you have an audience and you can... Have... You know it's okay to laugh. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, that was a joke. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> and it felt too like, oh my gosh, this is a live performance. Anything could happen. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a live performance. I mean, like, they could go up in a line. They could, like, they could fudge some words, mm-hmm. like, whatever. Mm-hmm. That was exciting, though, because it was like, oh, anything could happen. Oh my god, that's so good. That's yeah. so cool. It, it really, oh. Oh gosh! So, um, yeah. And initially, that was my thought, and I was just—I was really—I was just like, "Wow, wow, wow!" Yeah. You guys gave me so much great material to work with um, that it, it made it like the cut. So the first step of the process was was just like cutting your guys' tracks down, like removing the bits where you had to like redo a line or anything, and like that took like oh, that, makes that so took happy. like maybe. Yeah, you missed- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, God, I'm so good. I'm, I'm probably like making this such a headache for Alex. No, it, you, you, yes. you guys both like, but to your credit, it was like a couple small mess ups, and then you would go like pages at a time that were just like, I didn't need to cut a thing. I was like, <laughs> I would have hate you too sometimes. There was one um, specific line I definitely fucked up, and I, I recorded it in a way again where I don't think you could fix it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't yes. notice anything. <laughs> Not at all. But that, that's always the way I feel, though. Like, even with my, like, opening spiel, like, you were listening, but there are, like, words I'm like, why did I hit that syllable that hard? <laughs> oh, and it's yeah. like, I, so I get where you're coming from. There are times where I, like, when I hear it back, I'm like, hmm. and Do I really sound that Midwestern? <laughs> <laughs> there are some, like, I'm like, why did the actor, actor, decide to, like, emphasize that syllable? I would not have done that again. You know like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. yeah. Like, yeah. oh, that's a choice. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. I was having oh, a lot of those for myself. Like, oh, that, that's a choice, wasn't it? Huh. I well, didn't, I mean, of course I noticed it when I was reading it and we were recording it, but I got to hear it even more listening back as an audience member. I love the way that you write words. Thank you. <laughs> I know. Well, in my, in my rehearsal with him, I didn't know at first that he had, it just said an audio play by Alex Richardson. And I was like, oh. He, that must be like the adopted, you know, for for the podcast. Mm-hmm. But then I, when I was reading it, I ca- I came here and I go, is this this is yours, right? Like this this writing yeah. is too much like you. <laughs> <laughs> too much in your voice. It's, it's yeah. so you have such a like a particular writing style, and it's so good. Oh like, my god, thank you. Words exactly. I love it. Yeah, and. You know, like when we sit, like you know, director and actor, and we deconstruct like moments and like, like adding emphasis to certain words, adding time and space and all that. It feels like you know, um, like time is slower, <laughs> like, like when we yeah. do it. But then, as the audience member, it flows through, and it's I get to see the finished product of what we were trying to capture. Mm-hmm. And as an actor, like we so rarely ever get to to s- experience it. Yeah, we don't. We see it complete. We see it from a different side, obviously. Because because we, I mean, we're performing it, so it's like how much do we? And even when you like see the like recording of the show afterward, it's always like you're it's like way in the back, and like you're like this yeah. big on yes. the screen, and <laughs> exactly. you're like you're not getting any of the performance. Yeah. Right. Um, but like, I think what's so cool about this process is like, you guys are more so audience members than, I mean, just as much as an audience member as everyone else is, cause like you did your performance and then left and then heard none of the, right. none of the development after 100%. that point. percent. And I, that was one of those things where like, I watched it back and when you, when I watched myself on like my tiny self on the far away camera. I'm always like, man, that sucks. <laughs> why, why am I doing that with my arm? Yeah, why, my posture is so terrible. <laughs> but this was one of those where I, I felt like I could visualize both yours and my facials. I could yeah. feel it. like it. I felt like an audience member. And this was one of the few things times where I've seen a recording or I guess I've, seen, I've listened I like seen, I, yeah. I felt this audio recording and I was like I'm really proud of that like I Truly. I thought that I did a pretty good job oh my God. I was I was proud of it too I, yes, I, uh, so good I was like wow this 
this is kind of funny. I know. Me <laughs> yeah. I hear myself back on video and I'm like, oh. Video's hard. Yeah, hard. video's really hard. I Both video or audio, just like the sound of my voice. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> the way you write, like, I think you write words in such a way that like, yeah, we can almost feel and see the facial expressions, uh, the way that we look. Yes. So it's, it's almost better. It's always <laughs> almost like... ASMR, in a way. <laughs> especially ASMR. with yours, Adam. I picked it up so much. Just like the way, especially your your actor was very your your Max's Max was so like haunting, and he had these like like T's and S's and like the end of the sentence. Like I could feel like the the. It was so it was so good. I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. Um. It, I, oh God, your guys' performances were so different, and I loved what, yeah. I loved how it was, it really felt like almost different shows. They did. Like, the focuses were so drastically different. Mm -hmm. um, they did feel, like, very different. Mm -hmm. First time I listened to it, I would do, like, eight minutes of you, mm -hmm. and then I would play the same for me, right? So mm -hmm. that I could, like, take moments and divide them up, and I was like, these feel completely different. And mm -hmm. then I was getting, like, lost. I tracked not, mm -hmm. uh, like, with the wording, but just... The feel of it was mm -hmm. so different, mm -hmm. and I loved that though because that's what we were trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, even because you recorded before we did, okay. and Alex was like evil laughing. He was like, <laughs> "Yours is so different," <laughs> and I love it. Yeah, because you, <laughs> I you, see you, you came over. I think it was on it was that Sunday, exact. and yeah. she came over. I think on Tuesday, okay. and so it was like relatively recent. And so like I was remembering what you were doing and comparing against what she was doing, and like doing my best to like not like do any of what you did for her because right. like it did, it would have been wrong for your performance, and like it was just. So fun, the the totally different directions you two pulled me in for, mm -hmm. like... Because, like, I had those questions at the game, like, who do you want your character to be? Yeah. And y'all really took that ball and ran with it, because, like, <laughs> as... Because I'd all just finished, um... I uploaded... Or I scheduled, I guess I should say, your rehearsals last night. So I just got done listening to those yesterday. So, like, those are... The rehearsals is fresh in my mind. Yeah. Um, and, like, what I... I'm so excited to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what I thought was interesting about the process is, like, the very, very small differences that I, like, made in the moment for each of your um, rehearsals. Like, for instance, um, there's a couple lines with Adam's performance where I was like, cut this word. We don't need this word. Like, something about it was, like, throwing off your cadence and rhythm, and yeah. I just, it didn't hit my ear right, so I was like, we don't need that word. Whereas with Cassidy, I didn't have that word. Like, it, like, kind of flowed, nat like, a little more naturally in your voice, and, like, it didn't even cross my mind to be like, oh, wait, I cut that word with Adam, because it just, it's, right. and so it was, it was, like, literally, oh, like, a word. So... Yeah. Like, a single word. Um, but oh, what it was it? Play, it plays differently, right? The cadence, the timbre. It's oh, I remember what it was now. The, li the line was, um... They something along the lines of they say your life flashes before your eyes. Um, with Adam, I cut that first your, so it was they say life flashes before your eyes. But I with you, Cassie, I you I left it as they say your life flashes before your eyes. I don't know why the um, word your for whatever reason didn't. They say your life. Uh, they say life. Like, I think because I went into it. Yeah, it was like, it was something about just like the way you hit the word. Where I was like, get rid of the word, and yeah. like it didn't even like. It didn't even cross my mind with Cassidy to be like, and I, I don't mean that to be like, as no. like a, a knock against your performance or anything. It was just, I was like, if you don't need the word, just get rid of the word. If that's right. like creating some weird hurdle in the performance, just. It's so interesting as a director, a, a, you know, like you're trying to be the eyes of everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting for this. You had to be the ears too. Mm -hmm. And that's really interesting that you bring that up because you're right. Like maybe like. It didn't, it, like, it hit your ear a different way, you know? And so all you had to do was just tweak it. And that's, like, what the director does is, like, help to make the actors, like, look the best. It was, know? like, a note out of tune. Like, I heard right? it, I was, like, flat. Yeah, but it's so cool. <laughs> but, like, off, off beat, get rid of was it. Was that a challenge on your end? Like, because it's mostly visual, right? Like, for stage, like, oh, like, the blocking type stuff, especially for different types of, uh, like, stages, thrust or in the round. But... Was it a challenge for you, audio-wise? I mean, even on the stage, for me, the visual is a component of it, but I'm almost more so focused on the audio, because of what okay. I really... That's what I respond to, most of all, is, like, the way things sound. Okay. And so, like, even on stage, I will, like, take the time to, like... I was gonna say... Make sure lines flow right or feel right in the moment. Mm -hmm. Um... 
I remember rehearsing for Their Town, and I remember there were definitely moments, or I feel like you did this for, because you were our producer for She Kills Monsters, mm-hmm. too, where you will go like this. Yeah. In, in yeah. The seats. I'll just He'll put my head down, down and listen. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Because, <laughs> because the, the, uh, the vision, because, like, a lot of the times what it is is, like, a scene will kind of land on stage, and, like, it'll sit there for a minute, and, like, the people just start talking at one another. At that point... The visual is the visual. I know what that is. At that point, it's like, what does it sound like? Like, what are the? How does it feel if I'm like, if I'm just blind to the performance? Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, audio has always been the way lines sound has always been very important to me as a director. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do pay more attention to it now because that's a hundred percent of the performance. Right. Like we lose, and that was something we we both had to discuss a lot in both of your rehearsals. Is like. We lose all visual um, trickery is not the right word. Um, maybe it is. <laughs> all, all visual tools. Yeah, like body language, like shifting your weight, like fidgeting, like right. all of those like very small mannerisms, like sm- even smiling. You, right. you, I mean, you can kind oh, of. Hear- I could feel Adam smiling. Through, <laughs> right, I didn't even need. Uh, a video to see Adam. Well, that's what's so interesting is like you as an actor, you really get to use the voice yeah. as a real tool yeah. to tell the story. Mm-hmm. I love it. I know. Yeah, I. There were moments where I think in my performance, I did that as well, where I was like, because I can't remember what I was doing during it, because I'm just you know invested mm-hmm. in the script, and then I was like, oh my gosh, like I can like we. Going back, I even though it was just audio, I could see the performance happening yeah. mm-hmm. in my head. It was so cool, and I, I mean, I think I was just like doing homework while I was listening to it because I listened to it immediately as soon as he <laughs> sent it to me. I was so excited. Yeah. He sent it to a bunch of people, um, but yeah, I, I listened to it right away, and I was just like looking down on my couch or or like you know, moving things around on my desktop and my computer and it was it was so it was so visual with without it without needing that. Yeah. Without needing that piece of it. What I loved about your voice was that it it's the quality of your voice. It's almost like you, you neutralized it and then you started adding on things, you know? It was so calming. Right, so there's that ASMR quality to yeah. it, calming in the way that I was, I was with you, like mm-hmm. I was there with you. Mm-hmm. It felt real, like I said, I, I, yeah. I, I could see you. That's why it's like I was going along. There was some quality to your voice that was just I was so invested in it. So it got me thinking about like what is it about sound? Mm-hmm. It's so powerful. Oh, so powerful. And, and, and like using it differently, like pitch and timbre and volume, mm-hmm. like. It really can change perception. The the lot. the voice is such an exceptional, exceptional instrument. It really is because I mean, when people think of the voice as an instrument, they usually just think, go straight to singing because right. there's so many absolutely insane things you can do with your voice and singing. Yeah. But like, I think a lot of times people discount just like how much impact just like a speaking voice can have like oh, yeah. with just the power of a voice is really i think people take for granted they and do. so they like granted, yeah. um what what i love about um plays and audio plays is like i try to i try to write for the voice and i treat each character as like a dis- different instrument mm-hmm. um oh i love that because and then Ooh. like it's how do you play those instruments off one another mm-hmm. um isn't it like when he talks he's like sexy like, like <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? Like, he, like, says these things, and you're like... (laughs) Yeah. I'd be interested in knowing your conversation when you guys started, like, at your rehearsal. Oh, yeah, let's actually get into it, just because that's... What direction you guys, like, went in Mm -hmm. for this? So, your Max... The, the question that we, um, was that paragraph towards the end of the show where they, Max gives us their whole backstory. Yeah. Uh, it, it was originally, it was originally... Uh, written for a guy whose only purpose for getting in the theater was to hook up with women. Um, yeah. That was that was what the paragraph essentially said. With Adam, we changed it to it was someone who be, who was very community. who yeah. was lonely yeah. and I looking for community. I thought that was a little interesting because I felt like ours they weren't they weren't the same, but they were similar. You guys both went for the route of lo- someone looking for connection, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. But it was the distinction of what kind of connection yes. each of you wanted yes. that I yeah. thought was really interesting. That was going to be the next point. Um, because 
you, your character was wanting to deepen relationships yes. um, with the friends you already had, and yeah. your character wanted to make relationships. Yeah. Um, and I just thought that was an interesting distinction, and it colored the characters in drastically different ways. Mm-hmm. Because it's ultimately the same thing they want, it's just like the sh- the like the depth of what they want is slightly different. Yeah. Um, but it like it like had this ripple effect out through the rest of the script because I think with you you picked up on the drinking and like you pulled out this thread of like was he like drunk driving and I was like there's nothing that contradicts it in the text mm-hmm. and so like that was like kind of an element of yours that we didn't even mm-hmm. never even crossed our minds as we were going through rehearsal mm-hmm. like. Adam mentioned it, but, like, it in one ear or out so the other, good. as far as the rehearsal process yeah. was concerned. And, like, we didn't even, didn't even touch on it. No. And that was, that was really interesting. There was yeah. something that you, a thread you pulled on, I'm trying to remember what it was, that, that Adam and I also didn't touch. What was it? Uh, I, I talked about, I don't know if you guys talked about this, but I almost thought that Max is Max was, like, this higher being. Mm-hmm. Like, we kind of talked about how... It's like, it was, we said like worship pastory yeah. or like, or like Delilah is what <laughs> we were joking around about because I was like, Delilah. Anyways, <laughs> um, and um, we were saying that Max is Max was, Max is Max was this like guiding soul and then it almost ended up being like a, like a manipulation or mm-hmm. like a manipulative relationship towards mm-hmm. the end. I don't know. I don't know. What what other strings did you did he pull on? I'm trying to think. So oh, that apple pie smells so <laughs> I w- this is one of those moments I wish I could smell. I cannot um, oh, partake in the um, the smells of the pie, sorry. alas. Um that's really cool. Like um, finding an entry point into a character that way, mm-hmm. and how you how you did that with us just by asking a question. Yeah, because it was one paragraph. It was only the rest of the script was fundamentally the exact same, minus yeah. like a word or phrase here or there. Um, but it was that one paragraph that comes at the end that like shaped the whole uh-huh. the whole process. And I loved starting kind of there and working backwards through yes. the script with you guys because like. As we would just go through page by page, you would, you would just pull out entirely different things, um, and it was just it was so much fun to watch how different actors engage with the script differently. Because there was like different things that like Adam was like really wanting to work on that like you just like first time like knocked it out <laughs> and just like kept going. And then like there were things that like you wanted to like really like kind of work through that like first it was with Adam it was you know, first time knocked it out, like, just moved on to other stuff. And it was, like, those different, like, kind of gaps and, like, where you guys wanted to pay, pay spend more attention and, like, have yeah. questions about that I thought was just, was just interesting. It's, like, the decisiveness of the actor. Like, like it's it's the, the, the connection that you feel with those certain lines. You either get it or you don't. Right. And, yeah, it definitely hits at different points for sure. It does. Mm-hmm. Um... How was it for you when uh, during towards the end mm-hmm. when reliving the accident and having to jump as as one person you know doing one man show and then like going around? Well, I guess how did you approach it like psychologically? Like where like as far as like where was Max at there? And then like um, vocally, like how did you? Well, so Alex and I, I we haven't really talked that much about his accident. Mm-hmm. And so, before we got into it, I don't even know how it came up. You, we, I think you just mentioned, like, oh, well, and I don't know if this was in the re- in the actual rehearsal or if we were talking about it um, during a break, but we really kind of got in, in deep with the feelings he was feeling and, and um, just about the accident in general and and you know what was real what isn't and what you know the feelings and I felt like I really just kind of got into that conversation and I kind of tried to understand as much as I could and tried to empathize with him yeah as much as I could so I think that definitely helped um that that jumping between Max is Max and Max, mm-hmm. um, just in that conversation, I I yeah, it it's, was I mean how horrible and <laughs> yeah. It's you took 
uh, oh, like such a have. such a horrible thing. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's just like such a horrible thing, and you made it so beautiful. Yeah. I don't. How does that? Like, no one can do that. <laughs> People don't do that. You know what I mean? But you took something that is terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Yeah. It's and it fits with the October and the yeah. spooky ghost exactly. yeah. But like, it is a ter- that feeling, right? And like, how do you capture that authentically mm-hmm. so that it can read? authentically as well like not just for yourself as the actor to understand Mm -hmm. it but so that you can tell that story accurately Mm -hmm. um and to have somebody who went through something like that directing it and asking the questions and guiding us the actor through it Mm -hmm. i think is why it felt so um oh god so i I, real is not the right word (laughs) but i was listening honest maybe honest Mm -hmm. honest yeah i think it's why i felt Mm -hmm. more honest because we had that like we were able to kind of pull from you Mm -hmm. Um, what 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 i love about um both of your guys's performances is how much of it um how how, how am i trying to articulate this how much of it couldn't exist without me and i hold on how am i trying to conceptualize (laughs) this um because the laugh track for your guys's show came from another performance of ghost light right. like how much of like this piece just has like kind of built on itself over the years i think is really interesting yeah because like if i went in and tried to pull laughs out of other shows the laughs wouldn't have kind of lined up because the tone of the piece is not really funny right. but there are moments where you're like oh <laughs> it's like a chuckle you know what i mean and that's the kind of laughs that the show got and so like if i was to go through and like try to pull laughs out of another show it wouldn't line up because the laughs would be just yeah Inappropriate. To- totally wrong. Yeah. Totally wrong. Yeah, Completely, just yeah. just not in the right ballpark. Right. And so, like, the your performances could not ha- exist as they were if not for the prior performance. And I just think that's a very is that a very weird dynamic because like. I, I could have done the show without that laugh track and without that audience effect, but it would not. It would have been like half what it was if that. It wouldn't have been the same at all. And like. Right. <laughs> and so like that was that was something that was fun as I was adding I was like man if I hadn't done the show before I couldn't be doing it now <laughs> <True>. <laughs> which is um right I don't know that I've ever worked on a show like that before where I had to like do the show once to to do it better a second time because um, this is the first I think this is the first time I've like restaged a work even though the first time I wasn't the one who directed it I just produced it oh you didn't um, direct it before no 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 oh. which um I think I talked about with you mm-hmm. Uh, my friend Christine, um, who's been on a guest on a couple of episodes for this podcast already, um, she directed it. And I think it was like her first time directing, which mm-hmm. kudos to her for directing this script on her first time out. Right. It was wow. As I was go- going That's through heavy. it with you first, and I brought it up with you, it was it's a hard script. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's dense. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's and there's a lot of ch- choices you can make. There's so much the, potential. So much. <laughs> I mean, not potential, but you're right. Like so many choices. There's so many different. It's like ways. you hand us like here's a book, and you can make all these decisions. Mm-hmm. I, it's like it's, like, it's a choose whoa. your own adventure. It truly really is. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, as an actor. It's like it's it like a like. skeleton, but with so much density. Oh my, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. And that's that's really a lot of the way I conceptualize my shows is I'm building a framework for actors to succeed. Like, if I'm writing yes. parts that are fun to read, then they'll be fun to perform. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And so that's, that's kind of my mindset as I go through is, like, how can I enable actors to, like, connect with an audience as best as they can? Um, so in some cases it's, I'm just writing, Mm -hmm. I'm writing voices and then like the actors will audition and I'll match the voice. But then there are some times where I'll like write specifically for people, Joe as an example. Um, and and the things she can do writing for specific voices is so much fun, but like, um, it's (laughs) regardless of whether I'm writing for just like a voice or like a specific voice, um, my, my goal is. Anytime I said it, I was like, how can I make sure this actor is going to succeed when they get in front of an audience? Um, because so cool. because it's... Character. There's so many shows with characters that, like, aren't... That are boring. I've been in so many shows and had to take so many roles where, like, my role sucked. I had, like, mm-hmm. a scene. My dialogue wasn't interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, like, I lived to, like, deliver these lines about, like... I'm thinking of my cement of putting down a dog and then like that's my scene I'm done and like it just it isn't if I'm gonna take the time to write a script I want to make sure every actor involved has something fun to do yeah. and something 
Somewhere to plug in. Somewhere to plug in and like yeah. make their impact on the show. Mm-hmm. And so that's um, that's the way I always think of my scripts is I think of them as like a skeleton, like a framework to like let actors play because that's what it is. Yeah. It's a play. No, not um, really. Um, so I try to avoid stage directions where possible, like, say, like, happily, or, like, sadly, or exhaustedly, like how some playwrights do, where they, like, have to specify an emotion. I try to steer away from that, because it's more fun to let the actors play, because, like, Mm -hmm. there's almost no stage directions in this script. Mm -hmm. Um, like, I could flip through and find, like, maybe, like, a handful. Mm -hmm. The rest... It's, like, drink beer. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. like, that's the stage direction. Like, take a sip of beer. Yeah, that that is it, yeah. And it's like even that was fun hearing that. Usually, yeah. yours was so good, and that was awesome. <laughs> I had the yours was was g- frustrating because like the sip was, <laughs> was so, so good, good, but I also had the <laughs> of like you unscrewing your oh, water bottle. Wow. So I had yeah. to like cut out the <laughs> so I could get the <laughs> um, and then I had to like add in another bottle, like a beer bottle sound effect because like oh, you wow. had the like plastic water bottle and oh. it sounded plastic. I was like. Oh. So close, <laughs> so far. So close, um, so far. Uh, well, that's true. Like you really do try to set up a world that actors can walk into and succeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it right? really is it like a playground, like an actor's playground. Yeah, and it's like you have built it, and you're kind of like the <laughs> the god of it. But, you know, but and but you still allow us to walk in where we want to, like which <laughs> like you allow us to choose the door to enter, mm-hmm. right? Because there's different doors we could go in, like back door, side door, the doggy door. Right? <laughs> you allow us to go in the door we want to understand it, and then like once we're in there, to make us see everything as much as we can, mm-hmm. without being dictatorial about it. Mm-hmm. Very fascinating. Yeah. I bet that's interesting as a director too, especially when it comes to casting. I would love to hear like what Christine's experience with this was, just mm. because or or Elizabeth's as well, who's directed your shows, or Tori, and um, and ask them what like what it was like. I mean, obviously they could consult you on it, mm-hmm. but I would be really interested to hear. Um, what it was like the first time they read it, like without you, and mm-hmm. with and and how they pictured it versus like what it ended up being on the screen, or I'm sorry, on the on the stage. Um, yeah, I I wonder how how that relationship um, is with your scripts as a director, just because I've never been a director before, and I yeah. and and um, I I don't know, I don't even know where to begin in that process. <laughs> but um, it's. Yeah. I'll, I'll say, honestly, that um, I haven't been consulted all that much when other people have directed my shows. Um, yeah. Like, I will attend rehearsals, but, like, usually, like, the directors have things pretty well in hand. Mm-hmm. And, like, usually, like, their their feedback on the script is more so, like, hey, can we, like, cut these lines? <laughs> it's, it, it's like... <laughs> oh, my God, Elizabeth, she was the funniest, and she's like... Cut the entire paragraph for rearranging this fight. So funny. Yeah, I love <laughs> that. That that was fun. It it's it's. I think I hate talking myself up, but I think it's like a testament to my brain that like, that, up, that like when directors work with my scripts, they don't like they don't usually need to ask clarifying questions like, "What do you mean by this?" Like, usually they're able to like interpolate. That's a word. Yeah. They're they're, all, they're they're able to like find their own meaning and voice within the line so they don't yeah. have to be like, What do you mean by this? They're like, I know what that means. And like sometimes like the decision they make there, I'll be like, Well, I don't know that I meant that, but it works. Like it's the it's, what, it's I, like, I was just gonna ask oh, it's okay. like oh sorry, go no, ahead. You, you go first. <laughs> I was gonna say it's like the line in the show that is um it it uh I wonder if the playwright what what's the line I it it's might it's it might be the playwright's intention. It probably, it probably isn't. Probably isn't. Yeah. Sometimes it. Yeah. I know what you're talking. About. It's I I. <laughs> it's funny you bring up that line because as I listened to both of yours, I heard that line. I was like, <sighs> and I hated it <laughs> because what? I I just. It, it was something I did in my early works where, like, when I would write about theater, I would, like, acknowledge the playwright within the production. Ooh, and something about that I just don't, I, I don't care for anymore. Uh, maybe it's part of my whole, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like bringing myself into the process where possible. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. it, it's funny you mentioned that line, because I, that's not a line I like. However, um, I, 
I, it's I agree. I, I agree. I, I agree. Yeah, I agree cool. with the intention of it because uh, I mean, there's so many times where I I like I will write a line. I'm like, oh, it should be read this way, and then like an actor will do something that's like totally almost opposite. I'm like, that works too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like that's um, one of the things I really love about theater and plays um, mm-hmm. is the interpretations you can do with them. Is because unlike movies, plays are meant hopefully to be done multiple times in multiple locations by multiple different groups of people. Exactly. Uh, movies are like one and done. Mm-hmm. It's a, and even if it's a reboot, that's the reboot is still a, you know what I mean? It's, it's a one and done. There's not like people being like, all right, what's, what's our production of space jam too. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's immutability to it. Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah. it's, that's one of the things I really love about theater. And like, I think the scripts that are better, are the scripts that are broader, so, like, there can be those different interpretations of, of the script that different directors can read different things about what they want. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that, I think, is what I part of what drew me to playwright in the first place is, like, how do I create just a framework for, like, not just actors to succeed, but directors to succeed? Mm-hmm. Like, how do I, like, make yeah. a scene fun for, like, a director to be like, how are we going to work through this, and, like, what are we going to do with this scene? I wonder if playwrights think about that. When they write a play, you know, like... Hopefully. Kind of I, like, I would hope that's part of the process. I would hope. <laughs> but sometimes, you just like, you have some scripts you see, and you're like, wow, did they think about... How are we going to do that? But it's, <laughs> I like that you do think about that. Mm-hmm. You want to make it a good experience for both. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I wish I could see more shows where it has that, like, uh, depth to it, where you can see it multiple... You know, it's almost like... Mm-hmm. I know what you're saying. Like we've, I we've done Spring Awakening, and mm-hmm. I saw another production of it, and I and I loved and I hated certain choices about it, and I'm trying to think of other shows that I've seen. There haven't been many shows that like have that sort of depth to them where I've seen them multiple times, and I wish people did that more. Like, how many fucking times have we all seen Almost Maine? Oh my god! And it's, it's, it, this, this, it, this, it's always the same too. Or you can't take it with you, or yeah. Yeah. you know, like so Rocky many t- shows. Right. <laughs> for, for me, the shows I think of that I've I've only seen them done differently. And this doesn't necessarily mean done better, but it's Shakespeare. There's like yeah. there's a lot of wildly different interpretations of Shakespeare, and sometimes people will just like example. throw stuff at the wall just to see what sticks. And honestly, a lot of times it doesn't. <laughs> read. However, but I've seen like I've seen like a steampunk Romeo and Juliet. I've seen like a mm-hmm. lesbian '70s steam uh, Romeo and Juliet. Mm-hmm. I've seen like so many different variations on Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, Twelfth Night. Yeah, Twelfth Night. Yeah, like I've, Shakespeare. I think that's like the ultimate example. That, that's the, the ultimate example <laughs> because like he. He's the father of modern English, so like his. Right. Oh, his... and I mean, let's talk about it. A freaking Christmas Carol. <laughs> yeah. There I, I was just so... say Shakespeare didn't write that. No, but <laughs> that's <laughs> another. <laughs> um, actually, I think it does. No, but that's another one. Charles yeah. Dickens. Yeah. Like I've seen, there's musicals, Christmas Back carols, right. the Muppet Christmas carols, which yeah. is my personal favorite. <laughs> I <laughs> love that. It's just stuff that you see literally all the time, but it's like. It's the shows that stick with you, like, there's a lot of Playcrafter show, especially, like, uh, you know, something intangible, or, oh, or, I'm trying, I'm trying to think, The Bear Crucible. Town. Yes, like, things that I would love to see multiple times in different interpretations, and, in, like, wildly different actors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually just worked on a show, um, The Whistleblower's <laughs> Dilemma at Playcrafters, and it was... I got the rare experience of being a part of a, two original productions. That's really cool. And um, and I loved what Mike Trzinski did because I, all of the actors, you know, we kind of talked about it in, in the green room, but, um, you know, Sarah was kind of like Sarah Lawfer. She was, um, she played the main character and she was like, I typically don't get cast in the love interest role, but she like took that role and soared with it. Oh, I can imagine. So good. And Mike Trzinski did such an awesome job. Of, we are so off base. I'm so sorry. But um, No, no, no. It's We're talking about whatever. <laughs> this is great. But I was just thinking about how, how he cast people just like in roles that they wouldn't typically be filled in is especially the female roles and I felt like we all did such like a good job like that was another one of those productions I was like hell yeah 
We did that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I love Mike too. Yeah. Legit. He's another one he, like you that I can, I just, uh, I just really trust. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. He's another one that like when he makes casting decisions, you, you're not always 100% sure why, but he is. And right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. And you're like, <laughs> all right. I mean, I guess I trust it. Cause you're like, how, wait, huh? And then uh-huh. all of a sudden you're like, oh, oh. Why, you sneaky little thing. Yes. You, you had a plan all along. Like, <laughs> yeah. Not- He's he's good about doing that. He like casts people and rolls. You're all like, are you sure? And you're all like, oh yeah, no, he was. Like, yeah, yeah, he, 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 <laughs> you both have this ability to see like, really like, uh, how it's going to play out. Like, and be invested in the conversation. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and and like both like as actors, I feel like we both like can trust you a lot. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, yeah. oh yeah. So we can go there. Has it ever happened for you? Like obviously. You said you haven't really directed a lot of what you've written, right? Or if yeah, on the stage, definitely. Um, I mean, for the these audio plays, um, it's dinner time. Um, <laughs> dinner time. <laughs> Supper. Um, um, but for these audio plays, I've directed all of them up to this point. Got it. Um, and they've all been written by me up to this point. So like that's that's been a that's been um a change for me <laughs> is going for. Because um, when any of the people went up at the Mockingbird, um, Tristan was like, hey, do you want to direct it? I was like, any other body. Do not care who. Literally any other soul that is not me. Because the last time I directed a show, Work in Progress, trying to juggle playwriting with directing is so difficult for me. Um, you literally knocked it out of the park. <laughs> But you were the most stressed I have ever you seen were really a human. Stressed. Yeah. yeah, there was a, there was a lot of also behind the scenes. Because I'm sure happening. you have the ability to go. Oh, I just really like. I really want to change this part. I want to rewrite it so bad. Yeah, and... that would that would be most rehearsals because that mm-hmm. that script is very much a work in progress. Um, <laughs> right. It, but it the, like it's it was the first full length thing I ever wrote. So like it like. That's true. It's, there were parts, and, like, I had writ, wrote it, <laughs> three, I read it, I read it. <laughs> it three or four years before it was staged at Playcrafters, and that was largely the same script that we used at Playcrafters. It was, like, mm-hmm. condensed, but it was largely the same, and so, like, there were so many jokes where I was like, I, remember the I could do this better, I, I could do this better, I could do this better, but, like, it was, like, so far into the process that, like, and actors, the actors in that show were at very different places with their lines, where I was like, I can't in good conscience, rewrite this right now, now that this person already hasn't memorized and this person hasn't even attempted to be off book yet. Um, <laughs> that Has even part of, I think part of my problem was that cast was a, my own own special hell because I put all these incredibly funny people together in the same room and then I had to like rein them in every single night. Oh, yeah. I literally so goddamn iconic and so funny. I know. Is it harder for you as, as, a, as a director to tell an actor to give more or to pull back? It's so much harder for me. Well, <laughs> it's so much more common for me to tell an actor to do more. Like, it's very rare I see an actor, like, g- doing too much. Like, that's very, very rare, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, it, so, like, most of my notes are usually, like, please give me more. Please give... you. None of you are at a 10 right now. I want to see at least a 10. The note I always try to give my actors is, like, make me say no. I Do yes. something so Definitely. egregious that I yeah. have to say... Oh, I yeah. have to I have to put a thumbs down to it. Alex and um, I worked on that together <laughs> uh, in their town during the fight scene. I remember I was, like, there was one... Oh, yeah, I saw it. Yes, there was one part in, in that argument where... Um, it, it was the final, like, no, and I was like, no, and you're like, give me more, and I'm like, no, and you're like, give me more. Yeah, <laughs> it's, so, it's, it's very easy for me to pull an actor back, because I love when an actor has to make me pull them back. Yeah. Um, that's, I, that's a great problem to have, to be like, okay, you just need to bring it down just a little bit. <laughs> the, the, the AWIP crew, every single night, was me being like, please, just bring I it down a little. I was gonna say! Um, that's, that's, a, that's a fun, good problem to have. It's a great problem to have. So, yeah. like, I it's... I don't think of it really as hard or, e- hard or easy, but, like, what I have to do all the time is be like, I have to push actors. Yeah. Um, because it's very rare that there's someone who's, like, swinging out the gate every single day <laughs> trying yeah. to, like, trying to, like, break the curve. Mm-hmm. Um, that's very rare. But, so, it's... 
It's a great problem to have, to be like, please come back. Um, I... I oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, no, no you after okay, you. Okay, okay. <laughs> I like to go, like, I try to give a lot um, all the time, even when we're marking something, just because if I, I, if I make a mistake, which I make so many, mm-hmm. I want it to be glaringly obvious so it can be pointed out to me. Mm-hmm. And, like, a lot of directors... Or, I don't know if they're like t- trying to be like, oh, I don't know if I should give this feedback. It's like, no, no, please give me feedback. Give me notes. I need notes. I need to know what I can change because it can't just be me. I may not always it. agree with the change, but I right. do want to be critique. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's like, and I, I want to I a can't, conversation. I can't see what you guys see, and I want this to be to- like a story to be told. I want you to like to understand the story, to hear it. Mm-hmm. Uh, where was I going with that? Um, <laughs> I think to kind of to bounce off of this, um, the the rehearsal oh, processes yeah. I find that are the most successful, and this is to harken back to what you said a little bit ago, Casty. Um, so I can now cross this finger now that I remembered. Is the best rehearsals are conversations. Yeah. Um, where it's it's the director being like, I want to I just, I want to see if this works, and then the actor's trying. It's like, okay, that doesn't work. We'll try something else. I think those are the best rehearsals, and I think I've been part of too many rehearsals where like there isn't that environment of being able to discuss like i don't know it's like the director will give a note and then like the actor will like attempt it and like i don't at the end of the day they'll like they won't even acknowledge that change happened and it'll be like whoa did it work did it not it like there's i've been in too many rehearsals where like it just doesn't feel like people can or want to talk to one another about like what they're working on Mm -hmm. and that's so frustrating for me and so that's always something i strive for in my when i'm directing shows to like create an environment where like we can try things, and, like, if it fails, it'll probably fail spectacularly, but that's good, because we can find out how to make it better. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's what I aim for in my rehearsals, because, like, I think those are the best environments to create in. And, like, I think too many directors just don't... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the thought process is. Like, I don't know, it just seems like they're not paying attention, they're not invested, or, like, they don't want to, like, offer negative notes. But, like, there's... I've worked calories. with so many directors that, like... They could push further, and they just choose not to, and I don't know. It's that yeah. that's always frustrating to me. But I, that's what I like in in like working with you two is great because like you have questions, mm-hmm. and there's so many actors who don't have questions. They're just like <laughs> reading, and you're like, "Can you do it another way?" And they read it another way, and you're like, "Okay, mm-hmm. any questions?" And they're like, "No." I'm like, I'm "Great." <laughs> <laughs> and so I love when you two are like what about this why does this like I think there was one line where Adam you were like this doesn't really sound like this character I was like oh, yeah. you're right it's not so we'll change the line um, <laughs> and so yeah. like I love I love when actors are confident enough to to, to voice their opinions mm-hmm. on like yeah. things that should be done because those ultimately make for better performances yeah, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so nice. are we gonna do that? Can we please get a count? Okay, <laughs> we'll take turns every time okay. we're talking the same time. We'll take turns. Uh, I was gonna say I love. Um, I I might one of my favorite um, things to do is is talk to directors. And um, I love to do it one-on-one, but I also love to do it in a group setting. Mm-hmm. It, it, it also um, helps everyone else understand, like, certain choices. And it, it creates, like, this really safe space for, um, I mean, nobody likes it when another actor is, like, critiquing. But, but it creates, like, a fun atmosphere to play or for like open ideas that's something that I've never had before until I just did the whistleblower's dilemma with Mike Trzinski and he's like the king of that yeah yeah it was like it was we did our table read so we read it all together and then that was nice just because we were able to be together and I kind of got to understand you know how the cast dynamic was and then I went home and I did my own thing I talked to Mike a little bit I come back and um, my character was was a little bit different and well it was actually a lot different mm-hmm. and um, and it also created this this place where we could conversate you know Sarah and I could be like oh I think you know I think this line has this and she's like oh yeah I agree I think that line shares that same dynamic or or certain scenes and we all got to talk about it, it was so fun it's so nice when you can like create that it's almost like a playground yeah like creating a playground where there aren't uh limits mm-hmm. or, or barriers and uh, 
maybe boundary is the wrong word because because I think of boundary as like a definition, mm -hmm. like defining something is, is like a boundary, but um, where we don't have to define something yet, yeah, right? Where you can you can play with it first, then decide. Wow, I love that. Yeah, where we can place. Yeah. Okay, like so, where are we gonna put our boundary for like the actor? Like, mm -hmm. where's that? And then as a character. Mm -hmm. And I remember first show Mike directed Jesus Christ Superstar. I think our first rehearsal. It was. It's really. An, it's. It's such an ensemble piece, mm -hmm. which is a different dynamic than the one person, right? But we all literally just. It was like um, acting exercises. We were just like creating stuff point. together as, as many people, but as one unit. Mm -hmm. You know, like how does an ensemble act together as one person? Yeah. And I, I wonder, is that always maybe the goal to like have everyone's voice come together just to I say think one it thing? should be. Yeah. I we think we even did that with with Spring Awakening. We did. We did. I yeah. that was my favorite part about Spring Awakening that I've actually been thinking about a lot lately, just because tis the season. Um, right. But like how how we each individually created our own our own characters, especially being in the ensemble of that production, but also coming together and like making that beautiful tree or yeah. or all coming together during Touch Me and making like this one beautiful sound and and picture and yeah. It, I was in a production of Caucasian Chalk Circle by mm -hmm. Bertolt Brecht, and it was. He wrote in the 30s, 40s. It was like epic theater is what they called it. Um, and have you guys seen that show, Caucasian Chalk Circle? I'm familiar with it's it. It's one of those where it's like the, the ensemble. It's, it's an ensemble storytelling piece, but they all, act, again, act as a unit. Mm -hmm. But the creative process for it, again, it was so... I think or organic is a really good word for it. Yeah. Because it's it comes from you. It has to, right? If it's going to be honest. Or if you're going to believe it. And... But having that environment is crucial because if that, if that environment's not there, then the creativity can get stifled because then we're thinking about ego. We're thinking about ourselves. Does it look good? Does it look bad? You know, if we can just do it and then take the feedback as, you know, not personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which can be hard to do as an actor sometimes, but oh, yeah. we say it's easy, but it, some it's not. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, that's why I just, that's why I made the point where I'm like, I may not always agree. <laughs> Oh, uh -oh. Definitely, yeah. And if you trust the director, and I do, you know, like with you, it's like, oh, well, yeah. Then I, I don't even question it mm -hmm. because I trust, and I already know where you are. Then, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's so important to establish that relationship, or at least the playground, mm -hmm. or the playing space, so that it feels safe to do mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah cre creating an environment where like everyone can feel like their voice matters and contributes to the overall performance. Um, yeah. Just leads to a to a healthier environment in rehearsals, mm -hmm. um, and b it leads to better performances because people feel more relaxed, like they feel more confident in what they're doing. And having fun. Yeah, they're yeah. having fun. That's yeah. that's the thing. So many I think productions forget is that even if you're doing really serious work like The Crucible or like Who's Afraid of Virginia Wolf, right. like it can st it should be still fun. be fun. Yeah. Like if the actors aren't having fun, the audience is going to be bored out of their it's minds. Call the play. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a big call the play. Yeah. Audiences. <laughs> feel if you're invested or not mm -hmm. like if you're in it when I, like 100 they'll know yeah. if you're checked out even a little bit they'll know uh, mm -hmm. it totally makes a difference in the in the energy they bring on stage i mm -hmm. mean like a hundred and ten percent if it lacks energy it is just like it yeah put, put, put me to sleep now please yeah. yeah it's like when you're in the audience as a theater person yeah. and you're and you don't even know the person up there and you you know that they're forgetting a line just now yeah. oh. <laughs> that's the worst when and you can like, tell oh, a line's no. been dropped and you're like oh god oh god no um figure it out like, no i wasn't like, even gonna say oh, anything okay. <laughs> I was just... approaching this project was interesting because as an actor i i don't rely on but i use my physicality a lot mm-hmm Especially like my face. Mm -hmm. oh, I like to yeah. use. I'm the same way. Yeah. And, and so translating that through voice mm -hmm. is interesting. What, what, what's, what's, what's been fun with this project is everyone I've worked with thus far, I've worked with solely in the context of theater. Mm -hmm. Like I'm treating all of these as like theatrical pieces, even though like voice acting is like a drastically different mm -hmm. style of performance than. Um, yeah. stage acting and but mm -hmm. everyone I've worked with so far is a stage actor and I think it's um, 
there are a few people who, who struggle with the transition, but like <laughs> overall, it's been really cool to watch um, stage actors engage with like just their voice and like how do I convey a performance solely through like this instrument? This well, one. and I have to say, sorry, no, uh, no, no. do you want to go first? No, go ahead. <laughs> that like sometimes I feel like even during rehearsal processes, like I feel I'm lacking a little bit in a, bit a bit of energy because I'm not in my costume yet and I don't feel like my character yet. Right. And then it's like when I have everything together and then all of a sudden it's like this whole ass fucking character that I knew was in there somewhere. It's yeah. just like all of a sudden there and Damn. it's a whole new show. Like mm-hmm. it's a whole like crisp clean like there she is show. And it's I that feel first like, time you walk out on stage in costume and there's lights on. Yeah, you. and you're yeah. like, oh, here she is. Like, uh-huh. here, here's exactly what is supposed to be happening right now. And it's the I, showtime moment. Yeah, I, I feel that. like yes. prepping your voice and only your voice. You have to like really imagine like who you are like as your character. Like you have to like you're in costume. Like you're in costume. You're you're on the stage and everything. Like yeah, <laughs> that's that's why I would sit there like well, recording it crystals uh and i would like I'd, I'd have to play it out like physically too because um i did it as well it. i was like sitting at the edge of my seat going like this and i felt like you know you see those disney yeah. you know, yes, the yes. Pixar voice. That's like, what i felt like, like, like I get it. i'm thinking of robin <laughs> williams and his little cube and yes, everything and yes. he's like yeah and yeah. did you hear you you see like, yeah you hear you taste you see the facial expression through the audio mm-hmm. yeah Mm-hmm. You can hear a smile. You yes, hear a smile. yes, a hundred percent. I remember you now being like, "How do you want to do it?" You asked, "Do you want to stand? You can sit if you want. You can do it like literally however you want to." Mm-hmm. Like, what would be like the most physically comfortable way for you to exactly to do it? You know what? You that... guys both elected to sit, which I thought was fine. Um, <laughs> although I did it both have you stand for screaming because I think that yes. that elect yeah. that was that be a better scream. Point. It was was the scream and the physicality. So at first I was just like, I'm gonna stand and scream back here, and then I needed a second to like get it together, and then I kind of did that physicality of like bending over and like screaming as if I had been hit, right. you know, or or as if I was terrified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely um, the the voice acting um, is something that I really struggle with a lot as an actor. It's something that I hear. Like, talk about, you know, watching your tiny self on the screen with the T-Rex arms. Now let's <laughs> talk about how I, I don't have any facials because I'm that tiny. Mm-hmm. So I hear my voice and, and I cringe a little bit inside. Really? You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. But but this was definitely a challenge and, and a good way to, like, realize uh, the power the voice has. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, the, the power the voice has to transform a character, transform a script. It's something that I also learned in my last show, too, because I, I played, like, a 50, 50, you know, 55-year-old woman, and, and I you know, it was another one of those moments where I'm like, the power of the voice is is there. Like, it, it does have a lot more, a lot more um, power. Mm-hmm. It has a lot of influence. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. exactly. I, I'm... <laughs> As you might imagine, I'm somebody who's had to lower their register a lot, uh, you know, in roles, yeah. you know, because Adam, you know, I run higher, <laughs> usually. So if I'm if I'm playing like a, uh, me too, <laughs> me too. Um, if I'm playing like a heterosexual male, let's say, you know, that um, for, if whatever for some reason I get, I played a lot of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, they're a very prevalent role. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. But, Ooh, yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> it's just like, the power of even just lowering the register informs the physicality then, mm-hmm. too. Yep. You, you, you find that, too? Oh, yeah. The voice, that's, yeah. So musicals are so You fun. did it in Prescription Murder also, and I, and I, that's, I, you are such. Oh, you're, yeah, you're Fleming voice. Yes. Fleming. <laughs> well, here's the thing about you, Adam. You inspire me so much as an actor, and I listen to the things and your techniques that you do, and it, it seriously does make a difference in the way that I perform as well. Thank you. Oh, uh, abs- <laughs> I mean, you're the one who has the talent and the thought, and it, it's so, I mean, like, he talked about, like, I listened to him talk about Fleming. I remember the first day. It was the first time that we worked together, like, as as uh, opposites. And I just, and I, you know, we had done shows, but we, this was the first time we were working super close. Yeah. 
and I remember walking through with you and Eric the first day and you were just talking about this backstory and and you you talked about the the posture that you were going to stand because of XYZ and it was stuff that I didn't even you know I'm still I mean I've been acting for a while but I'm still like a baby actor I'm still young mm -hmm. and and it was one of those moments where I was like oh my gosh he has such a great point and like ever <laughs> since you've done like uh, that's something that I keep in mind every <laughs> thank you uh, thank it's, you it's just something that I take notice in you as an actor and I admire so much and and mm. even with listening to this I I think of it's almost like how would Adam approach this is the way that I like to approach scripts as well you know wow. what I mean that's high praise oh <laughs> I love that I don't, I don't know what to say that thank you and I love you Oh, I love uh, you. I, I have fun doing it. Yeah. You know? uh, it shows. For, I wanted to ask about, uh, for your, the choices you were making for your Max, mm -hmm. um, you chose Connection too, mm -hmm. yes? But it was to deepen your connections? Yeah. I, I felt like um, Max kind of had this, um, almost like self-deprecating, like, sense of humor and like they didn't really they didn't have any great aspirations or they were just kind of like okay with existing but wanted to feel yeah yeah and so okay. that's kind of where that came from to to like deepen the friendships to kind of like to kind of like give some sort of it <coughs> purpose I could tell to existence from like the, 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 and this is purely by how you sound mm -hmm. from the very like how you sounded at the beginning <clears throat> and then to the end yeah. Mm -hmm. Now your your motivation wanting to deepen makes sense to me because I felt closer to Max, you as you know, as Max at the end of that. Because at first it was like okay, and that you like pulled me in. So it's interesting the way I was pulled in was like your motivation yeah. as the character itself. Yeah. What? How? Where did your Max come from? I like. Um, like I I decided I wanted to draw on the feelings of feeling isolated and like what isolation you do and then wanting just wanting friends like wanting the just like the basics mm -hmm. uh and how like i guess to punch that out i wanted to make the voices so drastically different i was gonna first. say how did how how do you feel like um the relationship with max and max's max like where did that like do you think they had a relationship at all I think unintentional, well, on Max's part, I think it was unintentional because what I tried to do was as the story progressed and then by the end, I wanted there to be parts where each of them vo like vocally started to kind of like merge into the other because mm -hmm. we were asking the question, where does the actor stop and the character begin? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. does phrase that the right way? Something along those lines. Yeah. And I wanted to, like, I want, because at first I wanted to drastically, like, ha have them be different. And as far as, like, how, how I did that, I, I don't say, I can dissociate very easily. <laughs> but I can in a weird way. But it's, <laughs> I just, <laughs> <laughs> pretending like nothing happened. <laughs> Cats are so like, funny. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's so cute. <laughs> She's like, don't talk, don't like, I'm me. fine, I'm fine. <laughs> you okay? You good? <laughs> Hey, sweetie. She's a little embarrassed. You're okay. I, I, wanted the, I wanted the voices to kind of fuse together mm -hmm. at the end uh, so that we couldn't, not, I mean, they were still different, but yeah. so that some words as Max sounded like the other Max or like some. I love that you pointed that out because I did hear that and I was wondering if it was intentional or mm -hmm. not. And, and I loved it and I think that's why it felt like just as haunting. I, I mean, I texted him, I texted yeah. the group chat yeah. right? and I was like, I was like, that was so haunting. Like it gave me. Like, it was one of those that gave me chills by the end of the the episode because I was just like, you you. They totally fused together. Yeah. yeah that was, that was I mean, they were still different, mm -hmm. but you could definitely. It it was that like cynical mockery of Max is Max. Yeah. It was so fun to play with the language, like just like saying the words. Mm -hmm. My mouth. And I could hear it too back, and it was specifically, um, and they are the best seats. 
<laughs> that way. Uh, yeah. There's just, there just, just like something about that 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 character loved eating those words. You know. It's so what what so when I was first writing in the first place, I the the whole premise is it's an actor playing a play within a play, um, and so for me, I had to make those sound drastically different. <laughs> and so the easiest out for me was to write this really kind of proverbial and like high English that like just lo- was like obsessed with like the way it sounded not what it was saying because right. so much of like the mountains <laughs> like so much of like touch the sky <laughs> where like there's so much of like what the character's saying truly doesn't matter like it doesn't really mean anything but right. it sounds pretty mm-hmm. you know what I mean and like that's that was and so what I loved doing was giving myself the out of the having the char- the actor be like this is kind of weird I know but anyway, <laughs> I love that. Like, it it gave me it gave me a chance within the in the show to critique the show and acknowledge that yeah, like yeah, yeah this is I, not how people talk. I bought into it when he dropped the character and it went back to like I'm not really like yeah it was my first time acting yeah mm-hmm. I was like oh okay like, yeah I felt that same thing it's yeah like, yeah you get to critique it I that. actually forgot that part and I and now I have to go back so. uh let me introduce myself. Right. right. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. And okay. that, um... It was scary <gasps> towards the end. Ah! Oh, All right, so now, excited. just... If it's bad, it's bad, okay? You know what I mean? And so don't just say it's good because you don't want to hurt my feelings. Okay. No, I won't. So just, yeah. <clears throat> I and it's more of a bread than a pie crust, guys, so enjoy that. That's my bad. I that. brought the right, wrong kind of crust. This episode brought to you by Sydney's Apple Pie. <laughs> Woo! I don't consider myself a very ethical person, but I am fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's Gucci. <laughs> I love scary. I do too. I love. I don't like haunted houses. Eerie though. and creepy, and mm-hmm. there is something eerie about ghost light. Mm-hmm. Like there's something just. It's like the being consumed by, by the end. It's mm-hmm. Be- being taken over by something being that's not over. you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Being taken over. But there's like this odd, sweet, haunting comfort. But you, it feels uneasy. Mm-hmm. You know, by Max is Max. Mm-hmm. That's why like I yeah. kind of like thought youth pastor. When <laughs> was, mm-hmm. Because I'm like, it's this sweet uneasiness where I'm like, I should trust you because you're this higher power but I don't for some reason. That's interesting that you looked at it as a a higher power. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All encompassing or within a theater space? Like within the space itself or like a more like omniscient presence? I kind of thought of it like kind of not in in a theater way but just like in a general but Mm -hmm. I didn't even really consider um, what it would be like what the higher power would look like. Mm-hmm. Um, in the theater setting. That's interesting, too. I, um, Ooh, that would be really cool. All of a sudden, like, I see theater mask projections. The way that I was looking at it, the way that I approached it in my mind was that... Up anyone else's mask. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you. Was that this was, like, a, thank you, like a universal you. ghost mm-hmm. that lives in the space where stories are told mm-hmm. and like things are created. And I've always found that fascinating, by the way, about stages in general or mm-hmm. spaces. It's like, I'm standing in a space where so much energy has been, so much has happened and eyes have been here and things happened <clears throat> right where, like, where this is. Something mm-hmm. that's always fascinated me. Theaters are a really unique space in that they're almost like churches or like places of worship because they're not frequently attended, mm-hmm. um, but they're attended at a specific time of day for a specific purpose. And, and, um, and there's like, and like energy focus yeah, at and it's there yeah and it's it's they share um not as much as they used to but theaters used to be like a huge part of like the public space like mm-hmm. back in the 19th century it was like yeah. you go, you would go to church and theater and those were like those were your like outings yeah mm-hmm. and so like uh, theater theaters have always served a really unique space in our society and culture and I, that to me has always been so fascinating too it, it is and there's something to that about people coming together and focus and everybody is hopefully suspending their disbelief right so everybody's in this kind of altered state not like a a beta state but maybe Mm -hmm. more of a like more in the receptive mode yeah and so i think there's something to that as far as energy is created or 
manifested and might that create some kind of entity or spirit or energy or focus that could consume an actor that's why i love having these conversations because like it's things that um it helps me like articulate like these thoughts that i have or like even the question you just asked like was it a higher being like in the theater or was a higher being like in general and it Mm -hmm. and it's one of those things that like i just I just feel or I just do as an actor but I can never it's sometimes it's hard to actually articulate and that's why I love having this conversation so I can like oh like let let me because when you articulate something it can help you build off of it Mm -hmm. instead of just like having that feeling Mm -hmm. uh, yeah that's why I ask questions is because I have all that going on but I have to name it Mm -hmm. for it to be real Mm -hmm. in my mind Mm -hmm. Um, there are so many times where I'll, I'll have, like, the start of an idea, and I'm like, I think I know what I'm trying to say, and, like, in the process of trying to voice it, I figure it out on the way. I'm like, oh, that's what I that's what I wanted to say. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I think that's, uh, that's an important part of the process, process is, like, taking that internal voice and, like, putting it out to the world, because that's how, like, pe- you can, like, if you hear yourself, you can, like, then, like hear what you're saying which <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> so, no, which, true. which sounds dumb but you, you know what I mean it's pretty literal yeah yeah um, also I guess if you had to answer now after like going through this ghost light experience where would you say the character wait, the actor the actor begins and the character ends yeah yeah like how, how would you speak to that where are you sitting? Is this a, it's a really interesting question. I, That's I've a question a lot that I it. it's was a philosophical a question, about quite frankly. Well. Yeah, I'm thinking a lot about it. Like, ever since this, mm-hmm. I listened to the preview, I was like, yeah. Because what we have, if we look at your two performances, is we have two different readings of the exact same script. Yeah. Give or take a paragraph and a couple words. Mm-hmm. Exact same. But they're drastically different um, in length. Um, they're, yours is three minutes longer. Mm-hmm. Um, they're different in I feeling. Um, they're different in pacing. They're they're yeah. they're different the whole way throughout. There's yeah. like there's far more that's different than there is similar about the two, other than the words that are being said. Um, and that I think is a testament to because you are two entirely different people. Yeah. Um, so I think to answer the question of where the actor begins and the character ends is that it's basically the whole thing the actor is the character if they're doing if they are living in the realm of that story then they are that character they are the character i feel like one of the better acting uh advice or some of the better acting advice that i've been given is um like whenever you approach a character it's like how um like, how would you personally react to this? Um, now, okay, now you have that in your mind. Um, now, put yourself in the given circumstances. How would you react or how would you act? And so I, I think it really is, like, I don't know if... I feel like an actor can take a character, but a character is always an actor. Mm-hmm. You know what I yeah. mean? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 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 Ooh, can you say it again? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the the um, actor is always the character. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that the actor is always the character, but the character doesn't always go with the actor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or I said it reverse, but no, I think that's I think that's you it. You said the actor can take a character, but the character is always the actor. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. The actor can take a character, but the character is always the actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. This is part of why I changed the names from character and actor to Max and Max is Max, is because yeah. <laughs> right. it's 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 uh, confusing to say the words actor and character so, so back and forth so frequently because then the yes. line the line just gets blurred even within your own mind. Even You're like, mind. wait, hold on, which <laughs> right? What's which is which? You have this ability as a as a playwright to. I don't know how you do it. It's your Pisces magic. (laughs) It is, though. Like, quite literally. Uh, I've seen your chart. Uh, You're able to create (laughs) realities, worlds within worlds, but that also, on some other level, kind of also actually exist. 
I don't know how to, you know what I mean? Something that we did for Scrooge at Circa when Tom Wall Jasper directed it mm-hmm. is um, it was like a Nicholas Nickleby type of show for Scrooge. Okay. And it was like we were all actors. Like that's what our characters were. Like I was actor seven and I was actor seven. And when I was there, it, the whole entire show, we were the show. And so like before we were acting on stage, we were, as soon as we hopped out into the house, we were actors. And so we were our characters. And I talked in this British accent the entire time, but it was the same, but because I was actor seven, like this was who my actor was, but it was, I created that actor. And so that was my actor seven. And so if you're going to see that show again, done the same way, you're going to see a different actor seven because it was, that's their actor. So like Tom was like, this is, you are creating these act, like you are creating who your actor like to six create, actor mm-hmm. to create so, a character. So, yeah, and so oh, it was really, really cool to do because it wasn't like this is who you are. It was your actor number seven and your actor number seven doing um Mrs. Scratchit. You're doing you are actor eleven doing Bob. You're actor six and like it's like and so you are these actors who then hop in to do these little characters, but then after you're not these characters, you are back to your actor. You're not Sydney, you're actor number seven. And so like it was really neat. Really The character's always the actor. Character's always the actor. Yeah. That is so if you would come on so there were different people playing so were there like two actor sevens, for example? No. Okay, but let's say there were, right? It was like mm-hmm. running and rap or like two, like whatever. Um, you would see a completely different like mm-hmm. Mrs. Crutchit at mm-hmm. the end, mm-hmm. you know, because of whatever actor they created yes. to create that character. Oh, it's a mind f, but yes. Yeah. It's another one of those things where it's like we're all on our own different worlds, <laughs> but we're all on the same yeah. universe. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I mean, we get so lost wavelength. in Like, how, how long have we been here? We could I'm, probably I'm af- be here look, for another five frankly. hours. <laughs> oh, we have well, been, the pie at least was in the oven for 45 minutes. We've been recording for minutes. almost two hours. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, hour 47 minutes <laughs> as of the moment. It's so That's why I think there must be something to it. <laughs> theater... There's something about it, and I, maybe it goes back to the origin of like theater when they would perform at uh, in coliseums or like those little. Mm-hmm. Um, I, this is horrible. I took the history. I can't even think of the words. But like, it was kind of like a ritual. Mm-hmm. You know, theater was ritual at one time. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. there's still something to that. Yeah, it's like its mm-hmm. own energy, its own entity. Yeah, I. But I feel like it only runs through some people. It only runs. Yeah, only some. Yeah. And only some people get it. I agree. But I do, we kind of, did we talk about this? How, like, whenever um, you, like, see a person in theater, I, I feel like I've had this conversation a lot lately because I was just recently at a cocktail party, and um, mm. there was some at my boss's house, and there was a girl there, and and uh, somehow, like, we both of us beat around the bush that we're involved in the theater community. <laughs> and then, like, and then we were like, wait, you're a theater kid too, and she's like, "Oh my god, yes!" <laughs> and it was like that instant bond, like that instant like. There's a oh, natural we get each other. Yes, yeah. yes, but it's only like something that like some people like. Only I well I I anybody can be part of the community like it's it's open to everybody it's mm-hmm. everybody's very welcoming but I feel like there's few people that you can have like deep connection and have mm-hmm. these conversations mm-hmm. with you yes. know what I mean mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, it's rare and it's so special when you find it. Oh, so special. Because, as you know, like in theater or in performing in general, mm-hmm. it's hard to find people who aren't just about themselves. You know? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, where, where they're interested in like what you're doing or like the choices you're making, or where you can tell they're asking questions. Yeah, mm-hmm. like how you brought the thing about asking questions. Mm-hmm. I've always thought that's so important. I'm I'm naturally like inquisitive and a little nosy. But especially with acting. I'm really yes. nosy with acting. Um, 
so it's yeah it's nice to find because you can trust the mm-hmm. other people and ask questions and because not... I feel like we're uh, the I feel like the type of like certain people that you're talking about are like the people who celebrate all the victories yes. even the little victories within theater that like mm-hmm. get very much overlooked mm-hmm. yeah. and instead of focusing on those main ones that you only want other people to celebrate for you it's like everyone's like no these are really cool things and like I want all these actors to succeed in this way because it's like such a magical moment when these things like succeed yeah. and you want to like you yeah, I mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's uh, there are too t- too many that are like only want to celebrate their victories and they only want to they only want other people to just notice that hello I want you to celebrate my victories. It's like right. no, did you like see all the other little victories that just <laughs> happened to make this whole entire magical moment? Like, uh-huh. You you my dear were not it. <laughs> yes. no. it, yes. it was everything else that was happening. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. much has to come together and be perfect for that moment to happen. Yeah, I, I'm. Like thinking about six dance lessons and six weeks of show we just did. When I saw the crew, like or like the the people, like the the props, like Marsha, for example. Like I look at mm-hmm. production staffs because I get like jazzed up about them. Yes. Because I know that they're bringing something. Like yeah. this, That is its own art. Because right you can there. see a script. Yeah. Whatever. You can see these things. Yeah. Whatever. But you can and you can have like the skeletal the skeletal like script. Right. And you're just like whoa. Like, you went from that to this, and I know not a lot of that was written in this. Like, you have so many of these, like, magical moments. Yeah. That's why it's, oh, my God, like, watching all of this progress happen with Disenchanted and then seeing these things on stage and then not, like, hearing the absolute, like, cheering that should be happening for these, like, little magical moments because I'm like, guys, do you even know what it took to get here? Like, seriously, yeah. this is perfect. This is, you better be clapping right now because yeah. this is like this is perfect like this is this is literally what we just built up to you guys come on come on come on, come on. like at yeah. the moment now because like we're all over here we just studied this moment we're like oh, crap this is the moment yeah and then others are, like <laughs> straight over people's heads sometimes and you're like oh, 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 oh my god yeah if only you got it you would just be blown away right now like yeah. these like little things Oh my god, it's it's awesome though. Like even when you have audiences that can like completely miss it, you still even as the team, you're all like, we got it. We got, yeah. yeah, we got it. It's like even victory. if they didn't get it, we got it. Like uh, we got it. And we can we can all celebrate the fact that like we made that magic mo- happen. Even if all these people are like, I don't believe in magic. Why is exactly. it do yeah. Like what are, you, what are you talking about? And yes. it happened up there, and we're like, woo! That's interesting that you said. It. Does it feel nowadays, um, like I don't know, post COVID that we're that we're performing now for, for people who have stopped believing in magic? Alex and I all the time talk about how people are like, right now I feel like you just have to spell out some fucking things within a script for people to be all like, oh yeah, I liked that, I enjoyed that. Like for them to even think something. Like too many times you have to literally spell it out. Like this is what I mean. This is, if you're not reading between the lines, this is what I mean. Like you shouldn't have to do that. You should... This is the whole thing about playing. Is it's like very, right. it's a, it's imaginative. Like you, you are imagining all these things. Like, oh my god, I wonder what happened. That's the thing. You need to be leaving, wondering what happened, because not all these stories need to like end with a, a period. Exactly. Like all the like the end. Like these are not like <laughs> you don't get that. You you go and you're like, oh, wow. You want to get lost in this moment because it's a moment. Like this yes. whole entire show is a moment. Like and so it's you're like. Moment. Wow, do you remember that time that I what, I was literally living for like two hours within this world? Like, yeah. like that's that's what I feel like a play is. What, like, you're what, literally playing. What's so powerful about theater, and so many productions miss out on, is like theater is like a communal, imagined experience. Yeah. Because like, if you're watching like their time, for example, it's Jesse and Alexa playing like. 20 different characters each and you buy every single one of those characters and like even though like their costume isn't changing nothing is changing about them they're like oh yeah that's like an 18 year old kid oh yeah that's like a 64 year old woman and like the whole audience just accepts that it's mm-hmm. just so like, cool there's, and like Absolutely. it's it's that it's the it's the power of imagination and there's so many shows that like I love it and I shouldn't even say shows because it's also I think on a part of the audience is that there's some audience who's just like they don't want to like put in the work (laughs) of imagining they just want to like see everything exactly as it is um which is something that playcrafters i don't know how much anymore because i haven't seen the show there in forever but um in the past like playcrafters all their shows had to be like fully realized like every prop had to be like there that Mm -hmm. the audience could see you holding this this prop this teacup whatever like everything had to be just literal. literal there's like no like 
imagine the spaces. The whole point of theater is to get away from the literal world and to go in and forget about everything. So Just like that, the play says, yeah. Like, yeah. that's that's uh, the whole reason that you go to a theater is because you want to escape the literal world around you so you can just... just and two... Yeah. As melt, a, as melt audience, it within the world. You're escaping the world. your world, and you and you're finding yourself in a, like another world, right? Because we see ourselves and and the people are the art, and it's interesting because that's really how it pulls me out of my own world, and I can mm-hmm. really, if if a, if a, like if a play can do that, if a production can really pull me out of my own world, so I'm not the actor sitting in the audience being like, oh, I see how that happened, or I wonder how mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, what's going on there that they've really done their job. So seriously. Like, like, I could really enjoy myself at Disenchanted. Like, I had a great time. I have to tell you, I get lost in the characters. And so did we, you know? Yeah. It doesn't feel like I am putting on a show. It feels like I I am, I am Belle going insane. I am, I'm Little Mermaid just really just walking on stage at that point. She's just, (laughs) she's just there. Um... And, uh, like, I, I very much feel like I hate capitalism when I am Rapunzel. I am very much like, fuck you guys. Stop buying my merchandise. I'm not getting none of it. Like, <laughs> I really like, I really do. I don't feel like I am a character at that point. Or, like, uh, acting. You know what I mean? Like Question for, you, uh, for both of you, guys. Um, and for you, it would be, like, the monologue at the end. Like, when you're jumping in between, like, the guy who hit the car and the, the medic. Yourself, mm-hmm. uh, all those people, and then for you, like when you happen to jump between those three different characters who are so very different, mm-hmm. completely different people. You know what I mean? Like, wh- as an actor, what's that? How do you? Because you both do it honestly and authentically. How do you do that? For like, what's your process? Like, what, what goes through your mind? I think because I've worked with so many people who have always brought up the question of who is your character? Like, clearly you have all these lines on the pages, but, like, behind the lines and, like, when the book is closed, like, who is your character? And I, and it's nice in my case that, like, I have these iconic Disney characters who I know the stories within and without because it's uh, these iconic Disney characters that you're always going to know. Mm-hmm. But then you have to put yourself in the their shoes in the year of 2021 and see, like, I mean... Would I want to give up literally having a whole ass fucking mermaid fin just for a guy that I never even met, but I just thought he was on a ship and I was like, oh my god, what a fucking cutie! And <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna get, I'm gonna get my legs and just give up my entire life. I mean, like, right. and then that me as the actor, I have to be all like, no, I would be like pissed. Like, I want, I've always wanted to be a mermaid. What are you talking about? Like, and then I'm gonna give up this fin for for legs. <laughs> yeah. I know what my legs are these things i want a mermaid tail and so me i feel like is sydney i'm making the acting choice to be like no this is stupid i hate shaving my legs twice a week and like being annoyed and everything and i i also like i feel like it's easy because i i feel like i feel for the characters at that point so I, you're you, so by that time you can like actually identify with something yeah. that you're feeling. Like, when I walk on stage as Rapunzel, like, because right before that, I'm in my Little Mermaid costume, which at that point, I feel like I'm just kind of go for you. Like, I mean, I gave up my fan. Might as well just go with the party. And, like, it's just, like, all these things. But Rapunzel, I, I feel very powerful when I am Rapunzel and I have that badass fucking costume on and, and that heavy-ass, beautiful, iconic wig. And I just... I don't know. I feel very powerful, and I have a statement, and I feel like Rapunzel needs her her statement to be said, and I feel like I am her voice, and I have to be loud about it, and I, uh, like, she has, she has a message, and she's not saying it to whisper it, and, like, she, so, I feel like I am doing these characters their, what was meant to be. Like, I I am, I'm carrying on their message, because that's what they want me to do. I love uh, it. I love that. It's like, it's like the strategy is like an emotional for you. Mm-hmm. How about you? I feel like with with this one specifically, jumping between the characters, I wanted to like keep it within like Max, Mm -hmm. and so it was more like like what did it sound like to Max, and then um, and then yeah, I guess it was just like what what is Max really hearing, and so like it's almost like I had this out not out of body quite, but it's but it's like there's a voice that my character would hear and this is just how it's coming out because mm-hmm. that's what I'm hearing if I was in that situation. Like, I put myself there. 
empathy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. What what I thought was interesting about both of your performances is that to me Adam's different Max and Max Max and Max as Max, there we go. Um to me felt like two distinct entities. Whereas, um, Cassie, with your performance, I felt like everything was filtered through Max. Mm -hmm. And I, for me, I connected with that, that choice, um, because Sydney and I were talking back afterwards and we were like trying to figure out, we were like, I was like, which one do you like more? And Sydney was like, well, I like Adam's more. And I was like, and I was like, really? Because I kind of like Cassidy's more. And so like, even between the two of us, like we didn't have like an agreement on like which one like resonated with us more. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, the thing that I resonated more with was like, that seeing everything through the filter of Max, like mm-hmm. I really connected with your Max, um, so which is not what Sydney connected with. Sydney, you connected with the um, the the Max as Max, like mm-hmm. the um, Adams uh, performance. Yeah. How did you put it? I don't know. I just I liked how different they were. No, I mm-hmm. loved that also. But I also like how I kind of got lost within who was who because that's the point is mm-hmm. when does the character stop yeah. and the actor begin mm-hmm. and with yours it was like they meshed together at the end because I could like feel your transition of you going <laughs> <Okay>. into you <laughs> and like I really like that but I loved that at the beginning like cause, because at the beginning you are now the actor as the character mm-hmm. and so like where the heck do you because I liked when I was like oh shit she stopped and if I wouldn't have listened to years first I don't think I would have realized mm-hmm. the times that you were Max and you were Max as Max yeah and so I I liked the way I listened to them like in the order that I did yeah but I liked not that I I don't even know that I liked yours more I just liked how different I guess yeah. they were mm-hmm. yeah, and, and maybe yeah. when I maybe when yeah. I said um like liked better that that might have been the wrong way to phrase it but like I know what you mean. Yeah. But, but like so, so different that, different like, pieces resonates. resonate differently yes. with different people. Yeah. And yeah. with with the podcast, every single audience is and an audience of one. Yeah. yeah. N- intentions don't always sit well with other people. And mm-hmm. I'm glad that that translated that cuz when I was doing Max's Max, that was like the first thing that I thought of was like this, I mean, this is a higher power, but it's also Max. Like it's mm-hmm. still Max. Right. So like if this was my first time performing, and like this is how an actor this is how an actor or this is how people feel like actors perform or this Mm -hmm. is how people or this is how a performer performs almost Mm -hmm. and that's kind of what I thought of when I was when I was um doing Max's Max is 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 that like like almost not quite a puppeteer because I think that I still believe that like Max is Max is this like like higher power being, but it is being orchestrated and it is mm-hmm. to your point being filtered through Max. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so confusing. What? No, yeah. Just imagine <laughs> I'm sure if we that were, didn't make any no, sense. No, no, no. I, it made sense to me. Just imagine if we were referring to them as actor and character, how much more lost we would I be. I know, right? Um, well, the funny is that like I almost took the same approach. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. Like filtering it through. I, only, only thing I did different was just the level of mm-hmm. how much was filtered through. Mm-hmm. But I still, yeah, I feel like I came out of I loved, part. I loved your, your, like, distinction between Max is Max is Max, or Max is Max versus Max, and, and again, Your snooty like, voice is so good. It's <laughs> so good. And we talked about this before, and you just said it, but that, like, that, point where you transition together is so good I love that yeah yeah so good it's written really well mm-hmm. but uh, again too we got that honest direction from you you know yeah. what I mean like so it, it did change it mm-hmm. I just think about how cool like it would be to just like always have the playwright there to be like mm-hmm. no this is what I meant <laughs> like because I mean how many times do you read a script and you're all like well, I mean like I could just, what I could do it. Mean? Yeah, <laughs> and you can have the player be like, well, when I was writing it, this is what I meant. But now, I mean, however many years later it goes from writing it to them doing it again and being like, well, I meant it this way this time. But honestly, if I were doing it now, like, I would want it to mm-hmm. be like this. Like, I don't know. Like, I liked the moments that we were able to talk about the dialogue. And there were certain things like, ooh, try, like, try this, you know, and see how it, it plays. Mm-hmm. Or like, mm-hmm. I love that just for three seconds, and I allowed three seconds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I bet it came from you and like ha- having me like play with the words. That was really fun to like 
to realize what you wanted to, like what you intended, mm-hmm. hopefully. Well, for me, I don't even know what what I might have intended in the first place because I wrote this over six years ago at this point. Like yeah. my, I, I think I said this to one of you. My intention is long lost at this point. I don't remember why oh, why I wrote this the way I wrote it. Just yeah. because, like, when I get in the when I get in the zone of writing, I'm not fully conscious of what I'm doing half the time. I'm just like, he honestly like something like takes yeah takes over you right yeah. If if you guys have seen the the movie Soul by Pixar, where like they like have them going into like the zone and it's like this other world. They really depict that in such a way that is like perfect because like I feel the same exact way when I am doing puzzles. Like I I could straight up sit and I have sit in front of that puzzle board for like six hours and do a puzzle and I didn't know six hours went by because I've just been in the motherfucking zone yes. doing this puzzle. And when I'm singing and when I'm like on stage and like it hits that sweet spot during this act where like, oh my god, like I just like and the, I and then I get off stage and I'm like oh. Like, it's almost like a meditation. It yeah. is. Like, I just, I, my whole body is like, no, this is, you know exactly what you're doing. You know exactly what this is. And, like, you go off stage and you're like, quite frankly, I don't remember making any of the choices I did. Like, they just happened. Like, because it's just, like, that flow. And watching him write, it'll be, and it, his flow could last for, like, three days long. Like, <laughs> I, I'll, like, talk to him, like. It was a couple weekend, weekends ago that I wrote a whole show in a weekend. Like, I was at my computer, like, the whole weekend. And I wrote, like. Ninety percent of the show, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. yeah it created. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, he does. He just that was also part of the reason this was delayed. Happens. Is because like an idea struck me, and I was like, I you have to do it. I, I can't not. My favorite moments like, are when he's like, "Hold on, uh-huh. I have a really good idea for for a line." Yeah. <laughs> okay. Does it ever feel like there's a? And I, this is kind of border on the spiritual a little bit, but does it ever feel like there's something larger artistically, like speaking through you, or like you're. Like your the the way I describe it is when I'm like really in the zone, mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like I'm writing because that same sounds like a conscious act of effort. Yeah. It's almost like I'm taking diction. Yeah, it's almost just like you're like completely one hundred percent in the receptive that, mode. It's that I'm like fully listening to my inner voice and just like trusting my instinct. And like most of the time, my instinct is taking me where I need to go in the story. Like yeah. it's it's like th- there are so I can't count the number of times. Where, like, someone has been like, oh, it's really cool that you did, like, this. And they, like, point to a thing. And it's, like, so specific. And it's, like, how I, like, reuse this phrase, like, ten pages apart. And I'm, like... Oh. Oh. (laughs) Like, that wasn't, like, a conscious effort on my part. But, like, that's just, like, I will get in the zone for that, like, long period of time. And, like, I... It's it's not even, like, a conscious effort on my part. But it's just, like, yeah, that listening to that internal voice and just, like, trusting it... Um, yeah, it's, to me, I described it as, like, taking diction. Like, I'm just, like, hearing something, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's good, that's good, mm-hmm. that's good, that's good. And then eventually the voice will just stop, and that's the brick wall where I'm like, okay, I'm done for the night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, and I, so, so that's the way it works for me. Now, to go a step further, have any of you ever felt, when you're, like, when you're in that zone, whether it be, like, something higher than you is speaking through you, but, like, communicating through you and you're in it, have you ever gotten lost there? I, I have one time. But I, I'm ask if, you, um, if you've ever gone there and then suddenly you lose, mm, kind of, yeah, it's like you, you do get lost there. For, it's, for me, it's almost like, I think I kind of know what you're talking about. It's almost like you're just like in a wavelength and you're a groove and you're just like, you're just grooving along. And I don't know how else to describe it other than that. Um, like you exist in that phase is what you're asking? Well, like... Not phase. When acting, like, I, I, I always I always keep a small degree of, of Adam mm-hmm. conscious because he has to be as a storyteller, you know? But it was like that moment where that part went away. And then suddenly... I, I think for me, because my authority is, like, I'm always emotional, mm-hmm. so I go there, it's like, for me, I would get lost in, like, a wave of emotion, let's say. Um, but then suddenly it's like, you don't have that 10% of Adam there to, like, move, like <laughs> bring you back in, or, like, to, to kind of, like, notice that you're even doing it. Yeah, wh- when I'm, like, really in the zone, you, Sydney's right, it's like I'm blacked out. Like, I, she will say entire sentences uh, to me and nothing. Yeah. And Just absolutely up. nothing. He might make noise back. <laughs> but even yeah. if I ask him about the noise that he made, he was like, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, that happens a lot. Where she will like ask a question, and I'll like make a noise, and she'll be like, "So that's good." I'm like, "Huh? What?" <laughs> and then I, I think it's in those moments that we trust ourselves the most because we're offering absolutely no resistance mm -hmm. to anything outside of us, mm -hmm. and so we can be in the receptive mode completely, which is why there is that trust and that flow and. That's why I see it. Like, you know, we, we think we can c control certain things, but really that's not. You're just pushing something away, you know? Mm -hmm. um, when you can pull everything in and be completely re receptive, it's so nice to get lost in that flow. But then you have to trust the people you're working with, right? Because then you can very easily fall into their wave, their emotional yeah. wave. Yes. And you can take almost take it on and adopt um, it, and it's not yours. Specifically but... with Rapunzel and an audience participation number. There we go. Yeah. yeah. There are moments I'm like, am I German? <laughs> and because sometimes I'm like, there's no Sydney in there at all. That was all Rapunzel. And then I'm like, where'd Rapunzel come from? Sydney. Um, that, right? That's a cute little circle there. It's like Black Swan. It's like Black Swan. <laughs> but, but yeah. But sometimes the audience also takes you out of it, yep. which is yeah. upsetting. And oh, audience crushing. participation is so difficult. I yeah. wonder if they realize that they play as Almost they don't, because like I said, no. it goes right over their head. If it's not spelled out for them, even when it is spelled yeah. out for them, they're like, was I supposed to I mean, I didn't like, when was I supposed to be? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, you were. Audiences, do you think audiences have gotten lazier because of cinema? Or because uh, of just culture? Ooh, cinema, interesting. Hmm. I don't know that I have a frame of reference, because relatively speaking, I mean, I've only been experienced audiences for 10 years. I don't know over the course of that 10 years I've noticed a change, but Same. I also don't know that I've been paying enough attention over the course of those 10 years. I just think... I don't, I don't think Roll the really... It might... Around. I think it <laughs> might even be, like, a regional thing, because I think it's, yeah. in particular, Quad City audiences just really don't... Get it. ...fuck with thinky shows. Like, they shows where you it. have to come and think. Like, that's why, like, musicals always do really well, because musicals, really most really of the fun. time, yeah. aren't really tackling anything of, like significant and also, importance. They it's, really kind of slap you in the face with clap now, the song's over. Yeah. And then you, you get clap. A, you get a button and everything. Like you get and, yeah. a button. Yeah. That's why it's like those little magical moments that you know you made happen and there's like no way it would have happened without you guys. It's like, <sighs> damn, you didn't clap there? Like <laughs> are you paying attention? You like are part of it. Did oh. you hear that monologue? Did you hear that like whoop bam of a <laughs> phrase that she said to him right before she left? Like but like I'm, a, I feel like I'm the only like sometimes I feel like I'm the only like person in the audience that goes to theater and like because I'm like I hung up on theater etiquette too. That's oh, a thing. Oh also. my gosh, that is really annoying. I I but I feel like also to your point talking about um, um, you know, on audiences getting lazier. I feel like, and I don't. I feel. I hope it's not me as an audience, or I. I hope I'm not. I mean, Matt and I always have a good time whenever we go see shows together. We are fucking <coughs> hollering. We're so <coughs> annoying. But, yes, but like, me. even like we went to Chicago about a month ago, and we saw a couple comedy shows. And I've seen a few shows since then in general, and I feel like audiences are getting like quieter, or they, not. And I don't know. Sometimes. I think it could go either way. Like, maybe they're quieter because they're thinking. I, I don't know. But that that's a good observation that you made. Or, I'm sorry, a good um, point that you made that audiences could be getting lazier. Because even, like, at the comedy shows I went to, they're like, are you, are you guys here right now? <laughs> what I've learned from, like, bootlegging and, like, mm -hmm. having all these people come up after the show and, like, right before they leave, they're all like, we had a great time. Good job. And it's like, are you sure? I didn't hear you laugh at all. Like, yeah. thanks for saying you had a great time, but can you, like, let us know next time? Like, I feel like sometimes they're not sure if they're allowed to. Yeah. Or, because, I mean, like, I've always heard, like, it's a theater. you got to be quiet in the theater. And it's like, well, no, because we kind of thrive on your reactions and you are definitely a part of the show. Like, yes, we're doing the same show over and over, but every show is not the same. It's like Monsters, and Inc., the, like, the <laughs> screams. Oh, it's my like God. audience uh, yeah. participation is like, what gives us energy. I We shouldn't have to have, I mean, if we have to, we have to have, an, have a sign with light up that says applause or aw, aw or, you know, like, do something. Because, like, that's, that's the thing about theater is that you're playing and mm -hmm. so you you're you're laughing and you're crying and you're and you're doing all these things because you're imagining all these things like 
this is you're you're putting on a show like yeah. <laughs> so from, from from a historical perspective things have absolutely shifted um because in the 19th century like it was standing practice that police would not go and break up any fights that broke out at the theater because, like, that was like its own space where like people were allowed to like <gasps> do it. The Shakespeare Theater, yeah, was very emotional. and so like that was just like a standing practice until a bunch of riots in the mid nineteenth century put an end to that. Um, the fire. <laughs> the, that's a wild story, but that's yeah. a whole other thing. Um, but it used to be standing practice that, like, that was, like, the theater is the place where you could go and be, like, loud and boorish. If, like, they were doing a shitty job, you could be, like, boo! Yeah. <laughs> like, that was, like, tomatoes. <laughs> like, that was, like, uh, that was just, like, a part of the, part of the parcel. Um, but we, so, like, from a historical perspective, we have absolutely shifted because, like, I don't, I can't think of a time I've ever heard an audience, like, Boo. <laughs> right? Now, we have had this, there, during the run of Disenchanted, there was a night, and oh my god, I literally was just cracking up backstage. There is a part at the end where um, she tells Sleeping Beauty, because you just don't fit in, and uh, she's like, I'm going to do my song. She was she was like, I just don't understand why we can't fit in my song. She's like, because you just don't fit in, and uh, and that, and you know, it's like, uh-uh. Okay, so this audience, they had been drinking, everyone was like, so connected with this show, <laughs> Wait, and because you just don't fit in. <gasps> Boo! <laughs> and I'm like sitting backstage waiting, you know, for her to do her song, for then to me, and then come in for this. Uh, uh, and I hear all the, the, I mean, the whole, boo! And I was like, what Whoa. in the hell is so going on out there? They were just, they were like, beauty, we love you. Like, they were just like, they were so for her character that oh. they were actively booing Snow White. And I'm like, <laughs> Kim, she's like, simmer down. She was like, okay. And so at that point, she took it as the choice of the actor to instead of go, you know, like, I think that your song would fit perfectly right here. Like, what do you think? She yeah. said, I think your song would fit perfectly right here. What do you think? And she, like, turned to the audience. They were like, yeah! yeah! And so they, like, they were, like, actively cheering, like, the characters on. Like, it was, like, a total, like, they were they were there in that moment. They were like, boo! Yeah! yeah like, immediately. It's so almost, And it's interesting, too, that they had to get themselves in an inebriated state to let their guard down to be that receptive yeah. to buy into it that much to get that invested because I mean not to you know bring in the little prince the story of the little prince but like people lose their imagination and they like see the world in a whole different way and it's like mm -hmm. you need to put your like self in the I'm in a magical theater right now that is going to transport me into a totally different world than it is right now in 2021 mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm about to be a part of this story I need to be here for this story I'm, I can't think about what's going on over here because I need to be totally invested in the story for me to be just transported into this world. Right. And I, I feel like if people could go into theater knowing that, I feel like they would, they wouldn't even have to think about like, should I clap here or not? They would want, they would just be like, oh my God. Or they would just be sobbing or yeah. 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 I love when audiences lose themselves in it. You, you can tell by, yes. it's because they're reacting when they, yes. I mean, they are. Yeah. The, the absolute I, best thing in the world is when there's a play, and it's, like, the middle of a scene, and, like, there's an applause break for, like, something that happens. Yes. And, like, the lights don't go down or, like, anything. It's just, like, something connects perfectly, and, like, the audience claps. That's the best oh, feeling in the world. Because so you good. know you earned that applause. Yes. It's not 100%. like musicals where, like, they could fuck up the number, and, like, you still hear that button, and you're like... Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Like, you know what I mean? I like... Acting scene, something happens, and there's an there's applause. It's like, yeah, mm. that's the, that that's the magic. absolute magic. best that little magic so that good. you're like. And, and though I, I mean, I'm saying that's what you live for. Those like little moments that like are far and few between. No, that's that what not you only for. you, hundred yeah. percent. And then the audience connects with that little magic moment that like everyone like all did. should start head. serving just alcohol that. and just, right. and other things so that people lose their inhibitions and they just start like letting it happen. Yeah. <laughs> just that you're right. Um, just that one moment, right? Mm -hmm. It's like it's enough, right? If you can just it get really that one is. time. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's worth it. It's the rush. Yeah. <laughs> then you're chasing that high forever. Because not only are yes. you always feeling yes. that rush <laughs> each night you're going on stage, but you know that for a split second, the people who have never understood the rush of theater, they understood the rush of theater in their own way. Not even in the way that you know it. But yeah. they understood for like that one moment, they're all like, this is the magic I've been doing 
thing this entire time that I've been telling everyone about that I've been rehearsing for months on end. This is what the magic is. And they're all like, yes, I got, I got it for one second. Yeah. Uh, and you're like, at least you got it for one second. Like, it's those moments, it's those moments that you have to just celebrate every yes. time. Yes. It's so cool when you get audiences who really did listen to the story and yep. that it affected them in some way and they let you know. Mm-hmm. I always appreciate that. Yes. You know, I love to hear that kind of feedback. Because, yes. yes, even though that audience was drinking, the whole thing of the story is we have time. all fallen under the princess complex and everyone is perfect in their own way. It's not just this little princess storybook image of perfect. It's you are literally perfect no matter what you are. You are perfect because of X, Y, Z. And it was at that moment I was like, well, you just don't fit in. Snow White! This you boo! Like, right. we've been talking about this whole show that everyone's perfect. That's so, like, they were sad. literally like, what are you doing? And yeah. so, like, they connected. They connected. And they showed us that they connected. They were yeah. like, boo! And they invested in that character enough oh, to yeah. care about. The fact oh, my God. That, you know? To care enough to enough to boo Snow White. <laughs> There was a line in Six Dance Lessons. Now I'm going to get uh, my audience to boo. Yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a line, uh, the, me and the uh, actress are arguing, and something. I, I, I explained to her how my mother died, and then we get into an argument, right? I'm like, oh, it's a good thing your imaginary husband didn't hear that. And she goes, the only reason I got dressed is because you almost annoyed me to death. In fact, they check your mother's birth certificate. Maybe that's the real reason she died. And the audience all went... Oh, and it was like this. It wasn't a boo, but it was like a. It was a loud, largest reaction I've seen, and of this type, like oh, like they were all with me on that, you know. And in the scene, I'm kind of um, ob- obnoxious, so you mm-hmm. wouldn't think that they would be, but they were. And we talked about it afterwards. It didn't happen again like that, but it was beautiful for that one moment. Mm-hmm. It was like a benefit where everybody too. took a breath at the same time. Yes. I love Everybody that in another that. way as well, where it's like you hit a moment so hard, like especially uh, when you get into like fight scenes or like overcoming scenes. Like the one that comes to mind is me playing Emily Webb in their town, and it was that moment that Ethan and I hit our highest points, and then I said, you know, no, and then it was that silence. Mm-hmm. That or was, like you could literally hear the pin drop. That was the slap. Yes. In in some girls. Yes. Oh, was it? Oh, mm-hmm. We slapped, and then it was that same yeah. silence. Because I, you don't even really see it coming. At all. Because because it was such a build up. It was like we were speaking, but nothing was being heard, and mm-hmm. it was like this was the last resort, and it was just this like bone numbing yeah. slap to the face that just said more than words could, mm-hmm. and yeah. and so, the audience heard. It. Like yeah. they they heard the unspoken. Like oh. they heard yeah. Everything. yeah. It it's that moment where like and I feel like you can always tell, like you can definitely tell in, in that moment of silence whether or not an audience is with you. Yeah. And you it's, feel it's, it. it's the yeah. moment yeah. where everybody where where in, in six dance lessons it was they, they audi- audibly let a gasp out mm-hmm. but or like an oh but but it's also when they like all hold their breath at the same time. You can feel that. It's mm-hmm. like it's you can feel the air such, like it's sucked uh, out. Like of an room. amazing feeling. Yes. Like, and it's one of those moments too where like you look at your scene partner or you or you're with your your community of of actors on stage and you're you all feel it at the same time and you're all like almost lost in that moment. Mm-hmm. Like I remember mm-hmm. just like looking into Ethan's eyes and we both were like feeling the same thing because we were just there. Like mm-hmm. we were not ourselves. We were, we were our characters. It yep. was, it's, it's a beautiful moment. Yeah. So like talk about special moments. Yeah. Yes. There were moments in Catch Me If You Can where like when he would have to break Brenda's heart and say that he and like put that suitcase on the bed and I would I, it was it was Brenda yeah. looking at Frank it, it wasn't like Sydney looking at Adam in some moments like he and there would be moments like that I and I would be so proud because Mike would always Mike Trzynski he would always talk to you would be like these are the moments and I'd be like I'd be so frustrated I'm like I was almost there and he was like I know you were almost there I could tell and there were moments like after the show I'd be like I cried. Like, I'd be like, I cried as Brenda. And he was like, I know, I could tell. He was like, that was, like, beautiful. Because there would be moments where, like, Frank would just break my heart. Like, he would just break Brenda's heart. And then, like, that, the fly, fly away would just be, it's just so freaking. Oh, my God. Like, those were moments where I would get lost 
beautiful. Yeah, where it would just simply be Brenda. Yeah. Those moments are are so worth it. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. You know, they oh, are. Oh, yeah. Because uh, even if the audience doesn't get it, your whole body is just in your zone. And yeah. it's like, you, and it, it, it feels as if you could have zero people watching you. Like, it's just, you're at that moment where it's like, you're not even doing it for anyone. Like, it, there, it really could not be an audience out there. And you're just like, you're just simply like floating. It's almost like you're realizing in real, in real time, like, I just had like one of the most honest moments mm-hmm. of my life. You yeah. Know? In, the, in those moments, it's like, I was the most honest I could be. Alex and I, we talked about in our episode or in our rehearsal, we talked about um, how how it was when we were writing the monologue because it was like, because Max wanted to find friends and he's like, they complain about it a lot. They complain about theater a lot, but I mean, they seem like they're having a good time. And then we got into the conversation how nobody talks shit about theater, like theater people talk shit about theater. <laughs> It's yeah. true. And so true. It's so true, and it's it's those moments that like make up for all the bullshit. Yeah, and there is so much overwhelming bullshit almost on every single show that you have to wade through to get to those moments. Yeah, like <laughs> it's rare that I have a show that like I'm like God, that was such a fun and easy process. Like most of the time, I'm like. Get me the fuck out of I here. Have to tell get you me to closing. I'm get me having to my cute little like uh, cloud nine moment over here with Disenchanted that like this entire process hasn't been a freaking wart on my thumb. Like right. it, it the entire thing. Like I haven't had a sour experience this entire time. Oh, that's so but awesome. that is it's my so- once in a lifetime moment where my director, my music director, my choreographer, like everyone was on the same page and it was a beautiful gold line Magic silk like happens. page that is just not going to be framed. Like it's just like yeah. a wonderful experience and God bless I'm having that now because I know that it's not going to happen again. Right. It's so beautiful when the right group of people come together. Oh my God. Right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you have any shows that stick out in your mind that you kind of have that like, that like, oh, that was a perfect like i would not have done like that almost like a dream way. like yeah. you still just can't believe yeah i do um oh god i have to think on that uh, <laughs> i feel like i almost had it once but i i angels in america angels what where was that i was it was an undergrad uh nebraska wesleyan university mm-hmm. uh we did part one and part two in rep so three hours and three hours oh, so it's a six hour thing yeah. when you put it all together but I, and I remember I wanted to play Pryor so bad and I got the part and I oh was God. so oh. you were Pryor shut yeah. up it was that was I'll, it was magic I'll never forget that experience because like we came in every, everyone came in off book mm-hmm. um, so we got to play from day one. <gasps> oh that's, I love that's the that best. yeah and, and that coming off book f- fr- like you had a six hour show completely memorized uh, the words, you know what I mean? So at that point, like, literally we were all creating and playing, experimenting, and then going off on our own and doing exercises to mm. try to, like, work on scenes and finding the most honest moments we could. It was, like, I could cry thinking about it, you know? It was just that special. Because imagine walking into a space where every single person is so creative that, like, even if bad ideas are said... It's not even a bump in the road. Yeah. It just, no one can, no it's one takes just a, a, like, a building of creativity. As soon as you walk and you can just feel the creativity in the air and time just goes by and then all of a sudden you're done with the day and then you go back. I mean, it's like you just, it, you get lost and cause it, it's not a drag. Like, there right. are moments in rehearsals where you're just like, oh my fucking God, like mm-hmm. 20 more minutes and we're going to take a time. <laughs> like, like I've like you just you go in and you're like that was the most just so much progress within a rehearsal that yeah yeah, uh, yeah it just is magic it literally is just magic in a building that's why it's so, that's why I've never gotten stage fright because uh, which is weird to say right because I know like everybody has stage fright to, to some degree you know but like I've never had it because I was. I think because when I was younger, I think a director told me, if, if, Adam, if you're nervous, you're making it all about yourself. And I was like, no. Oh, you're right. That's I, a great way to put it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I've never heard that before. That's... I, it's I like that. And so I tell myself now, I mean, so I, that's, I indoctrinated that, <laughs> you know, and so now I think anytime I feel nervous or like I may have 
nerves, whatever. It's like, I'm making it about me. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's not about me. It's like, I'm the storyteller, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's about telling the story. In those moments, too, there's no thought of, how do I look? Like, does this look good? Like, is it playing well? Because like, would my character be thinking about how they look at this point? No, right. It's like this weird little, you just melt right into your character. Mm-hmm. And it, oh my gosh. Theater is so cool. I know, I love this conversation. Me too. <laughs> Theater love. really is just magic. It is complete magic. Because, yeah. like, you are transforming a story, but you are transformed right before you tell the story. And you're transforming while you're telling the story. And it's just, like, it's this whole freaking cool-ass show right yeah. in front of your eyes within a show. Because the show is honestly happening within your within and you. And then, magic, and then you're... though, too. Because everybody's, like, co-creating collectively this experience. And it does become magic when you concentrate that much energy. Mm-hmm. It's like the one thing that you can, like, you can take a layman and be like, hey, magic's real. They can experience it. Because mm-hmm. it is. I wish on every show, like, before the, the creative process starts, everybody could talk like this, like this openly about creating. Mm-hmm. I think it would lead to a really positive environment where a lot oh, could happen. Because, right. I mean, so everyone wants trust. to make the show great. Yeah. Yes. And I feel like so many people go into a rehearsal thinking that, like, they're, I mean, the director has their idea and that's their idea. And even though you have choices, too bad because I'm the director and I'm going to make you do these. And, like, that's fine because you're the director and it's your story. But you have these pieces who have ideas that, yeah, you can place them here. But, yeah, and your idea could be great. But now you have someone who has all these great ideas who can make your idea even greater. And, like, you expand it into this, like, amazing thing. And, like, I feel like so many people go into a rehearsal being worried to be shut down immediately that they don't even offer Mm-hmm. ideas and like you can tell that there's a show that could be something and you have like this feeling that there it could like it was like almost there yeah. but like something something was shut down and i feel like it's if, you, it's you, it's you, yeah it's usually that something yeah. is shut down yeah it's and it's, it's, it's i i feel like if people could before the show and be all like listen this is we are playing which means like all ideas are welcome like we have to make sure the it story is the best story playing. yeah mm-hmm. it never stops right yeah. yeah we'll always be playing we'll always i think that playing. could just make a great show every time <clears throat> yeah mm-hmm. i i do too wish that more shows could could start like that mm-hmm. you know because it really doesn't matter what the script is like tragedy mm-hmm. comedy farce vaudeville whatever right like as long as that's the environment you're creating in, that you're, like, here to have fun, the yeah. show is going to, even if it's a tragedy, be enjoyable because it's the actors who are having fun. And right. so, like, that that translates to the audience. Mm-hmm. Angels of America, I had so much fun. I mean, I'm dying in the show, you know? It's <laughs> a really... Emotional show. <laughs> emotional, fucked up show, but the language and the, mm. the performances are right is so mm. captivating that you can't help but be There is something by. about language. telling a story so truthfully that, yes. like, even though it could just be horrifying, horrifyingly sad, like, there's something so good, like, about telling it so truthfully that you're just, like, you're enjoying how just true it is, like, how, mm-hmm. like, how, how raw your performance is, because you know that someone out there is going to feel something mm-hmm. because of what you're doing, because you're just telling it so truthfully. Yeah. Even if it's just woefully sad. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I think it was G who told me one time, if you can get even one audience member to laugh, it was worth it. Yes. It oh, yes. Yeah. It is worth it. Mm-hmm. Oh, can- yeah. One audience member. Even if the rest of the audience sucks, if you, there's that one person who laughs at a joke that you think is funny, you're like, all right, cool. <laughs> this, is, this is all worth it. The rest of the performance would suck. And especially even... when you can, like, I'm thinking of especially Elizabeth Melvo or your laugh. <laughs> oh, yeah. If I hear that in the audience, <laughs> I'd be always I'm like, you done. <laughs> yep. Mission accomplished. Uh-huh. <laughs> because it's the people that you know no like yeah. it like it's they the people know. like you could have a bunch of strangers out there and you're like okay but as long as you have one who's like they get it yes it's yes. worth it they get yes. it i don't have a bunch Elizabeth of just Mel dumb you guys here they, they, they bought into this they're invested you know that's <laughs> it's always a nice moment <laughs> even if it's that one person life. who's tuned into that show that that's starts at seven o'clock on <laughs> wait, TV, wait, you have that one audience member that you're, you're speaking to that entire time yeah mm-hmm. So I do not want to bring an end to this discussion. However, I do want to bring an end to the podcast because we're getting close to three hours and I'm going to have to cut something out of here. And so I'm not looking forward to... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> to, well, we to, took a little break. 
like yeah. when we were eating you, the you pie. You should mention like so I had to edit this down from three hours. <laughs> yeah. You're um, gonna have to listen to it and like cut the middle conversations out and just keep it. So I'll figure it out, but uh, I don't want to end the conversation, but I am going to hit stop on record. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this week's episode. The goal of Barely There Theater is to create plays and entertainment for people free of charge, anywhere they want, anytime they want. Subscribe to us for mostly weekly updates with new audio plays, rehearsals, and whatever else might come up. We do ask that if you liked what you just listened to, consider donating to us at our website, barelytheretheater.com. And if you're in a position where you can't afford to donate, that's okay too. Consider passing this episode along to someone who you think will enjoy it. Get a hold of us at our email address, feedback at barelytheretheater.com, or leave a comment below if you're listening on YouTube. Once again, thanks for listening to Barely There Theater.